were out the door Leave your message here on the telephone Cause we've no idea when we're coming home
welcome to all our viewers in South Africa and across the globe to the 2020 ABSA Jewish Achiever Awards. 2020 has not been the year that we all expected. However, despite the pandemic, the doom and the gloom, there are individuals and organizations that have brought hope, care, light and heroism to all of us. So tonight we celebrate these individuals and organizations for their contributions and for their humanity. This year, we are doing things a little differently, hoping to reach our biggest audience ever. We have the most incredible show lined up for all of you tonight that features world-class performances, entertainment, and most importantly, tributes and recognition of the heroes of COVID and those in the community that have stood up and stood out. The official awards will begin at 6 p.m., but before we get to that, we always like to welcome some of our sponsors, nominees, judges, and special guests onto our red carpet to see what they're wearing and to get their thoughts on the awards. Please remember to send your pics, selfies, and special moments to our WhatsApp number 065-876-6779 and to post on social media under hashtag JAA2020. To start us off, I would like to welcome my colleagues from the board of the South African Jewish Report onto the red carpet. Good evening, gentlemen. Lovely to have you. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. It's been a long journey. <laughs> exactly. Howard Saxdean, Herschel Jarwood, Sean Matteson, and Benji Porter. Lovely to have you all with us. So, Howie, this has possibly been one of the most challenging awards to pull off yet. Would you agree with that? It has been because we had to think we're doing everything differently. You know, we delivered this afternoon about 630 meals around South Africa and East London and Durban and Port Elizabeth and Cape Town and Pretoria. It's been a mammoth logistical operation. But also, you know, when you have a thousand people in a room, it's actually quite easy. You have some entertainment, you have a decent meal, everyone's entertained and it's a wonderful event. Tonight, how do we keep people's attention for three hours? And the answer is entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. We are going to see some of the most spectacular entertainment I think ever seen in South Africa. Nothing to do with Jewish, nothing to do with awards. We put together a show that is going to blow people away. Unbelievable. And we also have our welcoming committee. So normally the three gentlemen on my right are the official welcoming committee. Gentlemen, tell me what is it that we are doing differently this year that you're excited about? You know, firstly, I want to say to the team, uh, that a year to celebrate people is such an exciting event. But yeah, the way that we're reaching out on a digital platform and virtually is our way of welcoming people into our thoughts about how to celebrate all of the achievements of our community. So look, the efforts that the whole team has done over the year in bringing to life content, um, you know, transforming from not just a newspaper to a virtual platform has been extraordinary. So in many ways, doing the awards under this platform really does celebrate everything Howard and the entire Jewish Report team have done over the years. So that makes me particularly proud. But I am missing the red carpet. It is a particular strength of mine. <laughs> well, this is, this is the red carpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also Sean's not on his... <laughs> and, but you're also not on crutches this year. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. there were no injuries no, to our board uh, yeah, No one was hurt in the process. Hasn't fallen off yeah. the bicycle in how long? Stayed upright. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't yeah. had the court an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you've got a lot of strengths, but the red carpet <laughs> is not one of them. Maybe the virtual one. But I wanted to just say my Prosecco is on ice in the in the freezer. The gin bar is ready on my dining room table. And I think just once again, I, I think that in a, in a year of so much uncertainty, of, of, of uh, so much despair, I just want to pay tribute to the board uh, led by Howie uh, and to the amazing people on the, on the Jewish Report who have really taken the publication to the next level and who have brought so much amazing content and, and, and value and wisdom and, and inspiration to our community, uh, not only in South Africa but, but uh, around the globe. And I, I couldn't be prouder to be standing on stage here with, with the board and, and the members of the Jewish Report. Thank you so much. You know, before we hand it over, I remember one of the first board meetings when COVID broke, uh, how he was demanding that we still got the paper out, and he, he, he ensured that we carried on dreaming about how to add extra content, and enough can't be said, Howie, about your contribution to the community. I've said it on a webinar, but I'll say it also that 
there's three problems to this uh, pandemic, the health problem, the mental health problem, and the financial uh, challenges. And, and what you have done to entertain people and what you have done to ensure that people remain connected has been astounding, and I couldn't be more proud to be part of it, and well done. Gina, let, a, let, let, a, let us just say one thing. I think this is an amazing, remarkable team effort that we've all done. But I think what we've really shown is we've shown great passion for our community. And, and the love that comes from each member of the community, from everyone we've asked for help. And we've asked for so many people for help. And everyone's just given with their That's heart true. and their soul. Yeah. This is about a remarkable community. And tonight we celebrate some heroes, but they're not just nine winners. We're celebrating an entire community that has come together over this period and has just shone. And I think we've got so much to be proud about our community in South Africa that really tonight is one of those great celebrations, one of those remarkable feel-good moments where our entire community can just sit back, pat themselves a little on the back and say, wow, we've, we've got a lot to be proud of. Well done. Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone has come to the party and our whole team and our board who just rem continuously give so much support to the paper, to everything that is done, to all the webinars. So thank you to such an incredible board who give so much time, commitment, passion in between their iron men. So I just want to thank all of you, obviously to our chairman Howie, who is the driver, the one who pushes all of us continuously, who doesn't sleep, who doesn't let any of us else sleep. And um, really just for everyone's effort is really as a team effort and thank you so much for tonight. Thank you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so without much further ado, we would like to now get on to some of our sponsors, onto our nominees, and to our special guests. So we are going to be crossing to Mandy Fine, who is one of our nominees in the Europe Car Woman in Leadership category. So just wait while we pull her up onto the screen, and um, the evening shall commence. And gentlemen, I didn't ask you what you're wearing, but um, you're all dashing in your suits, just to mention. So... <laughs> just to get you started. How it's been banting ever since. <laughs> Good evening, Mandy. How are you? Hello, everybody. I'm great. Very, very excited to finally be here and to be nominated and um, to be in, on the red carpet with no shoes on. So no I'm very shoes. excited. Well, that's, well, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing about our virtual red, red carpet, carpet is that, is that shoes, shoes are not required. required. So, Mandy, so Mandy, I want to ask you, ask you, so you are, are a successful, successful businesswoman, woman, you're, you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur you're raising, raising children. children. How do you, you balance, balance all of that, that in today's, today's world? world? Wow, that's a question. Um, I've been very conscious my whole career about balance. Um, I am a mother, and so I um, very, was very fortunate that being an entrepreneur, I could find time for my children and my business and was the master of my own time. I also, um, I also reach out to my friends and my family. I walk a lot with close friends and I do a lot of yoga um, and find the things that energize me. And so balance has always been really, really key to kind of finding the things that energize me and keeping going on um, the treadmill of running one's own business and being an entrepreneur. It's been a journey and I wouldn't exchange it for anything. It's been a real fantastic ride. And this year, 2020, the year of COVID, being in healthcare communication, um, the balance has been harder than ever. But working from home, I've had the fortune of having my children closely around me, my family around me, my partner around me. And so 2020 has offered me um, an enormous opportunities, but also um, has given me the pleasure of working out of my home and being close to my family. So while I know it has been incredibly difficult for so many, it's been a real blessing for me and to be able to apply my healthcare communication skills in this time. Amazing. Amazing. Well, we, we wish you the, the best, best of, of luck. luck. We, we think, think you've you accomplished, accomplished so much already. So again, everyone is a winner tonight. And uh, thank you for being with us. And um, we are going to cross over to our next nominee and also um, a member of the Kirsch family who are the wonderful and kind sponsors of the Entrepreneur Award. And that would be Wendy Fisher. 
Good evening, Wendy. Wendy. Great pleasure to be here. And I'd like to thank you and Howard and the team of Jewish Achievers. I'd like to thank you very, very much for giving me this opportunity and for, for nominating me. I'd like to thank Dori Weir and Marco van Emden as well, who have always been very close friends and champions. Oh, so thank wonderful. you. And I'd like to tell everyone, everyone knows, knows you are joining, joining us all the way, all the way from, from LA. LA. So, so thank, thank you so much. much. I'm not and you're, you're looking gorgeous. gorgeous. You, you always, always are. are. Tell, tell me, we were, we were discussing, discussing who are your, your favorite, favorite designers. designers? Um, my favorite designer is, well, I have an English designer by the name of Anna Valentine. So she's definitely one of my favorite designers. I like to wear Marnie. It's no and, problem. Yeah, that's what and, I said. And, and, and Dior are sponsors of the Guggenheim. So they, they are our sponsors. So um, I, I wear a lot of, of Dior because that's oh. part of my job as well. Oh, well, oh, well, listen, listen if, it's if it's part of your job and you have, have to wear to all, who are, who are, who are we, we to say, say no? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes, just, just so, so that we don't, don't know, you are president of the Guggenheim Museum. Museum. So does, so does that, that mean that you've been, been to the, the Met Gala? Gala? I actually have never been in New York when it's the Met Gala. So unfortunately, I have not been. That has okay, not okay. been a priority. So I haven't mm -hmm. been in New York when, when <laughs> the event occurs. But well, I'll definitely use on the list. The next time that there is an opportunity, I, I actually I've been quiet and thinking about things that I'd like to do that I haven't done because of work, because of other obligations. The Met Gala would certainly be a fun occasion to attend. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last question I'd like to ask you. You are so, I mean, you, obviously you're in the States, but you're so connected to South Africa. What keeps you so connected? Well, I'm South African. You know, two of my children were born in South Africa. My oldest daughter was born in Johannesburg and my middle daughter was born in Cape Town. We come back. I have a foundation in South Africa. I've been part of the cultural arena there for the past, goodness, you know, 35 years. And my heart and my soul is in Africa. I, I think I'm very much an African and I relate to the continent. And, you know, I just, I just love the country and the people. And I'm working well, we, very we closely on. now in certainly in terms of, you know, what's going on in the States, you know, I'm very well positioned to deal with what's going on, diversity and inclusion and, and you know, and moving the dial. So, and, and, you know, that that you are. Very thank you. So, so it's, Wendy, it's been lovely talking to you, but we are going to hear from you later on, especially around your Entrepreneur Award that you'll be giving out. But thank you so, so much. It was lovely to speak to you. And we are now going to be crossing to Jodie Schechter, who's a nominee in our Arts, Sports, Science and Culture Award and a world-class um, famous racing car driver. Let's just wait for him to come up onto the screen. We are crossing around the world. So hopefully if you've tuned in, um, you will also be uh, experiencing from whatever country that you have called in from, maybe if it be London, be America, be Israel. We are happy to have absolutely everyone on. And um, let's just see if we can pull up Jody, because I think that um, the amount of people that well, we've had, had to be able, able to get, get on tonight, tonight has, has just, just been, been spectacular. spectacular. Hello. Hello, hello. Jody, good, good evening. evening. Hi, hello. <laughs> well, we well, can't can see you, me. but we can, can hear, hear you. you. That's probably a pleasure. <laughs> well, well, can, can you turn, turn on, on your camera, camera for us? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah. Is that... No, that doesn't work. Um, Is that not, not working? working? I can see myself in a little corner there. What does that do? No. Uh, unless, unless you've got, you've got a little, little camera. camera. Not no, but, but let's, let's carry, carry on, Jody. Jody. It, is it is absolutely, absolutely lovely, lovely to have, have you with us tonight. tonight. Um, you, you have, have been, been a racing, racing car, car legend for pretty much most, most of, of your, your life. life. Your your most, most, most of your adult, adult life. life. Um, can you tell us, though, I've heard that you've gone into farming. How has that worked? Oh, I think we have just lost Jody. Sorry, the problem and the, the advantages and the disadvantages of having digital awards is that we can get people everywhere in the world. The problem is that technology may not always be with us. 
All right, so I think whilst we're waiting for Jody to connect, can we connect to uh, Stephen and Zoe Blend? Let's see if that works. Because um, so as we mentioned, we have got, got really, really a, whole a whole host, host of people, people today. today. We've, we've got, got judges, judges, we've, we've, we've got, got sponsors, sponsors, and we've, and we've got, got a, for every single award. We, we have, have an entire array, array of, of judges. judges. Hi, Dina. Can you hear us? You look absolutely gorgeous, mm -hmm. Dina. Thank, Thank you. you. But, but I, think I think we've, we've got, got Jody, Jody now, now on the visual. Is that correct? Let's see, guys. Come. All right, Jody, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Um, oh, yes, Jody, Jody, we can hear you and, you and we, can we can see you. Can you? I can't see you anymore. All right, <laughs> don't, don't worry. We'll just, just carry, carry on. on. Okay, I got it. I can see you. Yes, I can <laughs> see myself. So, where are you joining us from tonight, Jody? From my home in England. In England. In England. How's, How's the weather this time of year? About normal, bad, <laughs> terrible, <laughs> overcast, rainy. Well, growing, well, growing up, up in South, South Africa, Africa, I suppose we were spoiled, spoiled all those years. years. So no. now. Yeah, normally I'd be out there, but I'm not out there with all the uh, virus and stuff. All right, all so, right so, so tell me, Jodie, I, I want to know, are you still, still racing, racing cars? cars? No, I can hardly get into a car anymore. Well, then, right. then tell, tell me, me so, so as, as I, I said, you really got... I stopped in 1980. All right, I don't you make the occasional appearance. No, not, not in race cars, no. No, oh, not in, in my race old cars. car, yeah, in my old car, yeah. All right, now, All right, now tell me, so you, you moved on, on from, from race car, car driving to farming. farming. How did that, that come about? about? Well, I had, I had a little one in between that in America, and so that was very successful. And then I started, I bought some land and then sort of produced the best tasting, healthiest food for myself and my family. And so, so what are, what are you actually farming? farming? We farm, we used to farm about, I used to have 120 products in, 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 a, in a distribution center, but now we mainly uh, buffalo, buffalo mozzarella we make, um, and what else do we do? Um, and energy, energy drinks, drinks I know you make, make as well? Me. Sorry? Energy, energy drinks. drinks. No, that's my son. Oh, I okay. do that. Yeah. All right, well, well Jody, is there, is there a message, message that you want to give to, to all the South, South Africans, Africans um, that, that you may have a home, home that, that you haven't seen, seen for a while? Yeah, I, I send them all a meal, so I hope they, they, they enjoy that. Well, yeah, listen, I, you know, I feel very much South African. Um, I love to go out there. I've got a place in Cape Town, which I, which I love to be there. And uh, pity I'm not there. You guys enjoy the sun. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It's lovely, lovely to have, have you, Jody. Jody. And, we, and hope we hope that you enjoy, enjoy the rest of the evening. evening. All right, All right so, so that, that was Jody Schechter. So now we are going to move to Stephen and Zoe Blend. Stephen has been a judge for, I think, possibly the entire length of the awards. And... Um, his wife as well has stood by his side, has dealt with all the long hours of judging of the packs. And um, we really would just like to say thank you to Stephen uh, before he even comes on for all the years of commitment, of dedication, because we know that it does take hours and hours to go through all the packs, to go through all the nominees, to go through absolutely everything that goes into every single nomination of every single award. So thank you, Stephen. We're just, just going to try, try and bring, bring him up. up and and, so and, and, and there you are. You are. Good, Good evening to both, to both of you. Good evening. Dina, you look magnificent. Absolutely oh. magnificent. Thank, Thank you. So I, I want to say, say the same to you, but you have to be in the camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> Can you move the camera back up so we can get both of you? All right, so we're going to get this. I just want to start. So, Stephen, you have been a judge for, I think, it's going on 19 years now. I think it's 17 since Saps has joined as main sponsor. Prior to Saps being main sponsor, there was one of the car manufacturers and at that time, 17 years ago, um, I uh, helped make the shoot-up between APSA and the Jewish Report. And uh, part of my punishment has been to be a judge, which I've done every year for 17, which I've enjoyed very much. Listen, you, Listen, are, you are, so are so gracious, gracious about, about it that, that, I that I don't think you think it's a punishment. I know you get excited every year. You're absolutely wonderful, gracious. And the, the, even all our poor nominees who go in there scared come out saying that you are very lovely. So thank you for all those years of commitment. But now we have to move on to your lovely, lovely wife. Zoe, what are you wearing? Because you always look gorgeous. I have to see what you're wearing. You may even have to stand up. <laughs> no, it's, it's just a little dress I bought in London, actually. 
That, that is beautiful. So she did it very, very well. well. I'm also in grey. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm glad, glad you got the colour tonight. tonight. Absolutely. All right, so right, no, no more shopping, shopping trips, trips in London, London plan plan at, the at the moment. I know, anyway, because I actually always like buying evening dresses overseas. And um, not for a while, I think. So we're now supporting local designers. <laughs> well, you well, still, still look gorgeous. Made you made Sorry? Sorry? You made your dress. So, so my, my dress, dress is actually is from, from Carlo Pignatelli. So, so Donna, Donna Hasselson um, ha 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 brings, brings these dresses, dresses in, in from Italy. Italy. And, and I actually, actually got, got my dress on Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Oh, wow, wow, wow. It was a very, very lucky find, and, and uh, thought, thought it would be different, different for a digital, digital award, award, but you, but, you know, know, a girl, a girl needs, needs a dress. dress. Absolutely, absolutely. And you did very well. Very Thank good. you. Well, it's lovely, lovely to have the two of you on, and to have, have you on every, every single, single year. year. You are our stores, you are committed, and we thank, thank you for all your time, all your effort, and you both look fantastic. You're a wonderful couple, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Now, moving from our judges onto our nominees as well and to people who really have made a difference in the time of COVID, we are going to be crossing over to Professor Mervyn Murr, who's a nominee in the ABSA Professional Excellence Award in the time of COVID. Now, Mervyn has been touted by everyone who works at the Joburg Den in the ICU as just an absolute legend. He gives his time, he gives his effort, he gives his energy. And um, one of those people who is truly just selfless and has really, really made a difference in South Africa at the time of COVID. And, and um, um, we're going to try, try and, and put him up. The only problem, Mervyn, is that we can't see your face. I don't know if you can move the light around or if you can uh, move your computer around. I do see your halo of hair, which is beautiful. <laughs> there we go. Oh. How, How are, are you, Mervyn? Mervyn? Well, wonderful to be with you and thank you so very much. It's really a delight. It's actually wonderful to be out in daytime hours and spend some time with, uh, with my lovely family. And uh, we're so appreciative of the opportunity to be able to join you this evening. Well, it's, well, it's so, so wonderful, wonderful to have, have you. you. I'm, I'm glad, glad that, that you're not on a call, call and you're in, the in the hospital, hospital because, because I know that you do spend hours and hours and years of your life in the hospital. So I'm sure your family are also happy that you're home this evening. And I just want to know from you, you are known for, again, for your hard work, for your dedication, for your excellence as a professional, but you're also known about your hair. What is it that makes you keep your hair? I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I have to be honest. I'm going to ask you for some hair tips afterwards. But what is it that keeps your hair so, so part, part of, of you? You know what? I, I think number one, exactly as you've alluded to, there often isn't time to have my hair cut, but I, I love music. And I guess I, I may have been born into semi, the right era, and uh, have just maintained things uh, beyond that. Um, in fact, music is a real level. It's a passion, I think, for everyone. It means the same thing to everyone. The words, the lyrics, um, and actually the musical accompaniments are really fantastic. And um, I know when I, I got on in, the, in my earlier years, um, many of the people said, don't, don't continue in your career, as do many of the stereotypic individuals, keep their hair and so on. Um, but up over the past decade or two or three, uh, I've always had lengthy hair. And um, uh, it's, it's actually quite easy. If I do get out in the mornings, I just have a shower and I'm gone. Don't have to address much. <laughs> right, but surely you have to tie it up in the hospital. So, you know, over the COVID period, what we in fact did was um, ensure that head cover was particularly relevant. In fact, right up front, that wasn't one of the formalized issues of the so-called PPE. And in fact, it was in our unit that we said, you've got to have proper facial and head cover. And so uh, it's quite easy to actually just put a hairnet over. Everything gets covered up and then it's pretty easy to get in and all the rest happens. So never really been a problem. And um, at this point in time, um, I guess, thank goodness, I, I have a little bit of hair um, that I can still maintain. So <laughs> thank you for that very, very kind. Oh, fantastic. We're well, we so, so happy, happy and thrilled thrilled that you could join us, especially this time, time out in COVID. COVID. Thank you for all the wonderful, wonderful work you do. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of the evening. Absolute delight to be here. And thank you so very much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, and without any further ado, we're going to start with our first entertainment of the evening, and we are going to go to Kaylee Jo and Yiddish with Corinna Cuisina.
Now, wasn't that spectacular? True, true Yiddish of talent. So next with us tonight, we are absolutely thrilled to welcome onto our red carpet, Professor Lucille Bloomberg, who's also one of our nominees in the Europe Car Women in Leadership Award. Lucille also has spent hours, days, months, literally trying to deal with this pandemic, trying to deal with what is happening in our world, in South Africa, and how, how to, to deal, deal with, with it. it. And, and it's it. instrumental. Lucille, good evening. How are you? Yes, hello, Dina. And you do look wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So, so do you. you. Lucille, so when we told you that we wanted to do red carpet, you mentioned that you would have to kick off the pantofles, kick off the slippers, and that you were going to be wearing bespoke bling earrings. So I feel like you need to tell us more about this. <laughs> so they were made by my niece, um, who makes jewelry, Jody. And it's the first time, and I, I think they really are gorgeous. And they, they really make me feel confident. Yeah, They, they really, really, really are beautiful. And what else are you wearing this evening? Well, besides the pantoffles, which I think <laughs> most people are wearing, it's, um, it's a summer frock from <laughs> the Sheenies. Nothing uh, <laughs> Not designer, wrong wrong with with the frock. Very this is, and I think in your nature of work, I think what you do is more important than anything that anyone actually does see. And, and it's, been a, it's been a bit of a tough year for you. I mean, are you not normally in a, tell us, well, you don't wear lab coats. What are you normally uh, wearing every single day? No, I'm normally behind a computer or a microphone. I'm not like uh, Mervyn out uh, in the front line anymore. But I started my career in outbreaks in 2003 with SARS-CoV-1. And here we are 18 years later with the biggest one to date and a huge challenge. So, so, wow. Wow. so have so you been sleeping? Um, not that much, but you learn to, to do the catnap and always have your eye on the telephone and, and what's going on. So I think it appeals to my adrenaline uh, kind of nature. Okay, okay. So, so, so it sounds like you've actually been taking this all in and just sort of going forward with it. That's what I've been doing for 18 years. It's always a team, a great team, and uh, we will get there. We've just got to push a little harder for a little bit longer. 
Wow, fantastic. But again, Lucille, thank you so much for also all your work. And I know it's truly... To my, so yeah, sorry. A special message to my mother, who's 90, um, who taught me all the things that I didn't learn at university. And she's watching tonight. So a big gurus, mom. Mwah. Absolutely. Absolutely, a biggerest to you, and, and you can be proud of such a wonderful daughter. So the Nachas, there's nothing wrong with Jewish Nachas. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much, Lucille, and thank you for everything again that you do do for our entire country. And to move on to someone else, another woman, one of her colleagues that also continues to give is Professor Cheryl Cohen, who's another nominee in our Europe Car Women in Leadership Award. And Cheryl also, Professor Cheryl Cohen, also continuously has been one of those individuals throughout COVID who has literally, literally been in the front lines, who's been continuously working with us and with the country and with the, with government, the government to try and make sure that uh, the rest of us keep safe. How are you, Cheryl? I'm good, good, and a real honor to be here tonight with all of you. So, so wonderful, wonderful to have you. And I see you wearing a special colored necklace this evening. Uh, yes, um, but now I can't remember her name. Um, Kirsten Goss. <laughs> oh, we oh, love we... Kirsten Goss. <laughs> Kirsten Goss is fantastic. fantastic. I don't know, I don't do you know, get you a get... lot of time to shop? I mean, it's been a busy year, would you say? Absolutely, it's been very busy, and I have to say, uh, I'm very a different character to Lucille. I think she loves the adrenaline, and I really love the routine. I like my yoga class every Monday night. I like to 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 have structure in my life. So it's it's really been particularly difficult um, for, for me um, because I don't like all these uh, emergencies. Um, but but yes, I, I actually um, I do enjoy shopping uh, sometimes, and and. Uh, one of the effects of COVID was that I, I really did a lot more media than I had been doing before. And that gave me an opportunity to, to shop in a very justified way. So I could really, you know, walk into a shop and say, I need some dresses for, for TV, which um, isn't an indulgence one gets uh, the rest of the, the time out absolutely. of the country. Absolutely. Listen, Listen, a girl a after my own heart. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And if you have to, you have to. It's not even a choice. It's part of your job. So, so, Cheryl, thank you so much as well. And um, I just thank you also again for all your work. I hope that you do get some time off. I hope that it does level off at some point and that you actually get to have a holiday and that you maybe also do have some time to get some more shopping opportunities. So thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And again, just keeping it in the medical fraternity, we are going to be crossing live to, to Professor, Professor Barry Shub. Um, he is one of the nominees in the Kia Community Service Award. Again, Barry Shub also on the front lines. I mean, if we look at the people that we have this evening, it is astounding the amount of people that contribute to the country's fight against COVID and the contributions that they have made from a governmental level through to every single hospital. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So um, we're going to try and bring up Professor Barry Shub. Um, I know he may be doing his hair. Um, <laughs> not that he has much time. I know that he's also been on media pretty much every single day of the week. He's on radio shows, he's on television shows. People are asking for his opinion all the time. Virology is not such a common, I think, and, and, um, uh, uh, science. So, and I know, and there I go. I was correct. You are looking fantastic. How are you, Dr. Pro sorry, Professor Barry Shu? <laughs> Hi, uh, Dino. Well, thank you very much, and it's a great honor, great privilege to be here. Uh, to be here. Uh, so, uh, really, I must compliment you and uh, uh, Howie, the whole team. Uh, you've done a fantastic job, really, because uh, you know I've been on previous Jewish uh, achievers functions, and I thought, wow, with COVID, you know, how are you going to manage this challenge? And really, so far, it's been absolutely magnificent. So, uh, well done, Yesha Koch, and fantastic, great job. Thank, Thank you so much. And I can see that you've already received your meal behind you with your drinks pack. So I hope that it was up to your standard. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah, thank you. And so, thanks to EPS as well. Absolutely. And Barry, just tell me, what, what has this year been for you? What has it been like? Oh, I think like, like everybody else, you know, this year has been a year of challenge. You know, it's a, it's a, novel, it's a novelty. It's a complete novelty. The disease is novel. The way we've handled it is novel. So I think we're all in a learning curve. Uh, as a colleague of mine said, they're not experts, so we're all kind of gaining knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's been something, it's, it's been challenging, it's been stimulating, it's been interesting. Uh, and I must admit, I've enjoyed it as well. It's been a great to be a service to the community as well. 
Well, well you, you have, have become a bit of a superhero in this time and quite a celebrity. So we hope that you enjoy your status and we hope that you enjoy this evening. And it's wonderful to have you again as part of our awards. You are looking extremely dapper in your tie and your suit. So we know that you are ready for the evening. But thank you again for all the work. And I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot from you during the rest of this year. <laughs> so I hope you have a bit of a break Very in nice. December. And uh, thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, for having me here. Great being here. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. evening. Great. And now, and now moving on uh, from one nominee to a, a set of three nominees who, uh, who are Genevieve Solomons, Romy Leverstein, and Roxy Prebash. They are part of Feed SA. That is an absolutely unbelievable organization that has, giving being back, has been given back so much during COVID. And we're going to be talking to all three of them um, individually because that's how they come up. But we shall bring them up on screen. Uh, Genevieve's in Joburg. Roxy is in Joburg and uh, Romy is in Israel. So, so we wouldn't, wouldn't be, able be able to have everyone else if it weren't for digital media. How are you today? Oh, oh I, can't I can't hear you. Hear you. Are you on, on mute? mute? The, 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 the phrase, phrase of the year. Of the year. No. Uh, uh, now, now we can, we can hear, you. hear you. Hello. How are you this Good evening? Man. Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. So I know that you have been involved with these awards before, but I know that um, you very much now have, have upped the ante and your, your Feed SA campaign has been absolutely outstanding this year. Tell me about some highlights that you've managed to achieve this year with Feed SA. So one of our highlights was that we were able to feed over 80,000 people in the space of five months. Each were given a, enough food to sustain them for two weeks. So it was a great achievement for us. Um, and then we obviously be, were able to give back to our own community and feed people through Jewish organizations, which to me was a very heartwarming experience. Amazing. Amazing. And now we're going to ask, are you going to cross over to uh, one of your other colleagues just to ask them a question? Um, so maybe Roxy, you can tell us um, what has been a highlight for you over this period? Oh, it looks, I don't know if Roxy's screen is working. Let's just see. I don't know. And Romy? Sorry. I don't, I don't know. know. There we there go. go. Here, here, here. How, How are, are you? you? Yeah, thank you. So great. You look beautiful. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. It's lovely to have you. Tell us, where are you this evening? I'm at Neve Yerushalayim. I'm one of my dorm rooms. I'm in seminary and I'm having the best time. And as you said, I'm so honored to be part of this. I, I mean, that's the Jenna, take advantage it away. of Zoom. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. And tell me, I know it's very hard, obviously, but being where you are and everything happened digitally, you're still able, obviously, to be involved and to get things done. Um, what has been a highlight for you? Well, first of all, yes, of course. Um, I've got the best partners in the world that are actually my two best friends since we were little children. So we work really well together and we communicate all the time. So from Israel, it's been really, really, it's been great. And I trust the two girls with all my heart. The biggest highlight for me, I would actually say, is the Jewish community getting involved to a level that I never thought was possible. It wasn't just PSA, it was so many people, so many Jew, Jews just came together and really it was fight, like it was fight mode and everyone put in hours and hours and hours of their time to really try and make a difference in an absolute crazy, crazy time that no one ever thought would come our way. Absolutely, so absolutely. And I just want to try and cross to Roxy. I don't know if we've still got her, if she's on screen or not. Roxy, are you there with us? I'm here. There, there you are. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so just, just tell me, I want to know, what was the initial start? Because I've got very, sorry, limited time at the moment. What was the initial idea behind Feed SA? So Feed SA is a, it's a non-profit organization that was started in the early 2000s. Uh, we got involved about 10 years ago and since then have been setting up feeding schemes and community development projects in informal settlements around the country. Um, with the emergency of COVID-19, and as a charity that's been in the feeding space for many, many years, we mm -hmm. felt to get involved and get involved as quickly as possible. And that's when our Kunya campaign launched. And it just like Genevieve said, was it took off from there and we had the most unprecedented response from the Jewish community, Africans, all over the world. 
amazing. 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 Now, thank you so much. Sorry, we are running out of time, but thank you so much. You guys do such amazing work, no matter where you are in the world. We thank you. We think you're fantastic and um, really, really deserving. So thank you for being with us. Next, we are going to move to a nominee in the Kirsch Family Entrepreneur Award, who is Liran Asmus, and hopefully he's with his wife, Tamar. Um, we're going to see if we can pry and pull them up onto our screen. Um, um, again, again. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Liran, how are you? Is Tamar not joining us tonight? <laughs> Nadina. Are you Are well? You well? Great, you know, tomorrow's runaway. She's not, she's not, yeah, I'm well, thank you. Is she the camera aside tonight? She's she shy of the camera. She's le left it all up to me tonight. All right, all right so, so tell me, what makes an entrepreneur, Lorraine? Um, Dina, listen, it's, it's, it's about having positive energy. It's about uh, looking at ed anything in a positive way. You give two people the same you know, I guess situations and one will be able to make a success of it and one won't. I guess it's about a person's personality as well as having a huge amount of faith, trusting yourself with a strong uh, group of people around you because you can't do it by yourself. Absolutely. Well, listen, so thank you so much. We wish you all the best. We wish you all the luck in the world. We know you are a true entrepreneur and we hope uh, we will let you enjoy the rest of the evening and you can give us some feedback afterwards and let us know what you think. Thanks, Thanks so much, much well. Gerard. Great. Now, next we are moving on to Michael Katz, one of our nominees in the ABSA Business Icon Award. He is the chairman of ENS Africa. And um, we're going to try and see if we can bring him up on screen as well. Uh, uh, Michael, Michael is, is very, very well known in the business fraternity. Lovely to have you with us this evening. Good evening, Michael. Good evening, Dina. Thanks to you, to Howard, to the Board of Jewish Report, the judges, and certainly EPSA. And you've Thank really you. done yourself proud, done the community proud, and it's a pleasure to be celebrating this with you. Thank you so much. Now, Mike, I want to know, you are very worldly. You know what's going on in the world. Tell me, what is your view on the coming year? What do you think is going to be happening in the next year? Professor Shub put it very well. There are no experts. So it's changing from day to day, country to country. The world is in a very fluid position, and you have to be very brave to make any forecast. All right. Well, well you, you are, are so right. right. And, and, and thank, thank you so much for being with us. And I see your, see wife, your wife in the background back. as well. So lovely to have you both with us. I know you've been involved with the awards for so many years. So we thank you. It's lovely to have you with us. We hope that you enjoy the awards. And um, we're actually going to move now on to Danny Baton, who is one of our um, entertainment um, doyens, who is magic. And uh, we hope that you enjoy this musical interlude. Don't get me wrong, um, I didn't smile the whole way through chemo. That would have been ridiculous. I mean, I'm not superwoman. <laughs> and look, chemo was rough, I'm not going to lie. Um, my third session of the Red Devil, I literally felt like I was going to die. But I told myself, Danny, hold on. Hold on. Just, just one more day. Tomorrow you're going to feel a little better. And the next day, you're going to feel even stronger. And then the following day, you'll start feeling a little more like yourself. And by next week, you'll have some energy back. And you know, I wanted to write a song for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I, I worked with a few writers trying to collaborate on something. And nothing really stuck. Nothing hit me in my core. And so I went back to a catalog of songs I'd written in the past. And I found this one song. I wrote it when I was 16 years old. I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago now. Can you believe it? I still feel 16 sometimes. <laughs> no, but this song, I just couldn't believe how relevant the lyrics were to what I was actually going through right now. And I just want to dedicate this song to all my warriors out there but also to everyone. I mean, we've all had a, a really, really hard year. This pandemic, this COVID has thrown us for a loop. It's been a struggle financially, emotionally, psychologically. We've all really, really had a hard time this year. So this song goes out to anyone. If you've been having a really bad day, a tough week, an even worse year, or just in this hour, you need some cheering up. I hope that this song 
gives you a little bit of hope. Know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Always an honor to listen to Danny, but even more of an honor for me tonight to introduce Dari Wheel onto our stage, one of our okay. judges from the Europe Car Women in Leadership Award. How are you, Dari? I'm fine, and I'm so excited about this event being here tonight. And what an honor and a privilege it's been, Dina, to be one of the judges. It's overwhelming, it's humbling to be exposed to such phenomenal people. It's also a great responsibility. It's a challenge, it's not boring. We have to make it up as we go along. And tonight's the night. It is indeed. And you have been a critical, critical part of our organizing committee. Explain to me, what has it been like? Well, so let's just say that it's not boring. It's been a challenge. You have to say that no is just the beginning of a conversation and make another plan. We've got excellent people, not only in terms of our winners, 
who are totally phenomenal, but also in terms of our entertainment and the connection amongst the committee, and in fact amongst the whole of the, the Jewish people in South Africa and abroad. It's been really amazing. Amazing. Well, we thank, thank you. you so much. We love all the work you do. We are so appreciative. You are absolutely incredible. Team member beyond. Thank you so much, Dari. And thank you for the honor. Thank you. All right, great. And next we're going to be crossing over to Lauren Gillis, one of our nominees in the Europe Car Woman in Leadership Award. And um, Shane, Shane may be waiting, waiting patiently. patiently. Lauren, Lauren, how are you this evening? Hi. Hi, Hi Lauren, I want to jump straight into it because we're running out of time. Tell me about Relate. Tell me about your organization. Well, Relate is a non-profit that was started about 10 years ago, just with the vision to lessen the divide between the haves and the have-nots. So simple tool that I'm wearing tonight um, really brings uh, opportunities to unskilled, disadvantaged people and funds many uh, charitable organizations globally. Amazing. Well, I know so, um, we are just running so late today, but I thank you so much. You're amazing. The work you do is incredible. We thank you and uh, good luck for the evening. And next we are going to bring on Musi Maimani, who I think is no stranger to our audience and someone who has uh, been an attendee of the Jewish Achiever Awards for many, many years and uh, someone coming to us from Cape Town. Good evening, Musi. How are you? Good evening and uh, congratulations to all the winners. It's a great South African achievement, proud of the Jewish community and the unbelievable work you do for our economy and the people of South Africa and the nation of South Africa could not be proud to be here tonight. So thank you for the invite. Thank, thank you. you. And Musi, you have become a serial attendee of our awards. What is it that makes you want to attend the Jewish Achiever Awards? What is it that you get out of it every single year? Well, you know, I, I just love the, 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 the support to startups, the celebration of achievement. I think our country can be filled with stories of negativity, of all the things that take place in our country. It's amazing. Every time I get there, I walk out of there inspired to see entrepreneurs start, see great people doing great work of feeding people. It is part of our work of building One South Africa, and I'm inspired by the contribution that South Africans do. I wish one day we'll have the South African or... South African Awards for everybody because I think there's an inspiration here that all of us must draw from. So I could not be more proud and more inspired to be part of this event. Well, well, thank you so much. And we look forward to having you back next year, but we hope that you enjoy this year and that you're as inspired as we are for this evening. Thank you so much, Musi. And I, I want to thank EPSA for the great meal and the great food. I'm certainly looking forward to it and mazel tov to everybody and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, we're also crossing back to Cape Town to Suzanne Ackerman-Berman, one of our nominees in the Europe Car Woman in Leadership Award and the Transformation Director and Head of Ackerman Pick and Pay Foundation. Um, also, again, it looks like we have uh, quite a contingent this year from Cape Town, so we're so, so thrilled, thrilled and, and, and so, so um, excited to have you. Suzanne, good evening. You're looking absolutely lovely. Um, so nice to have you. Um, we want to know, you're always so positive. You've got so much and you've given so much back to this country. Country. Tell me, what are your positive thoughts for next year? I think if we can all just carry on doing more of the same, that we've all come together as a nation, as society, as a community, if we can all just carry on doing more of what we love, being with our families and just doing the important things that count. I think, as Musi said, as many of the others have said, that's what's going to make this world a better place. So that's what I'm positive about. We've all had learnings and we're all going to do the same next year and the year after and not stop. Absolutely. And you do continue to give. I mean, has, how has this year been for you? A nightmare, to put it mildly. <laughs> but you've also given so much. So there's obviously a huge amount of positivity as well. No, I, I think that's what's kept me going. It's been an incredible journey of, of giving from not only me personally, but our entire group, the entire organization, Every single one of our team members, our staff members across the nation has been giving to try and assist the vulnerable in our society to make the world a better place. And um, it's, that's what's kept us going. It's been extraordinary. Well, it's, well, it's amazing. amazing. And you definitely do your part in making our world a better place. So thank you so much. We hope that you enjoy the evening. Good luck. And thank you for everything that you do for this entire country. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we are going to be crossing to Paolo Cavallari, who is the CEO of i2, I think the chairman as well, 
and um, someone who's also been involved in um, sort of Ferraris for a very long time, a doyen, seeing that we're on that theme. And, and uh, I just want to see, we've got you, Paolo. How are you? Good evening. Oh, I can't, I can't hear, hear you. you. Are, you, are you, on you on mute? mute? The phrase, the phrase for, the for the year. year. Unmute. There, there we, we go. go. You, you are, are officially unmuted. So, Paolo, I want to ask you a very important question that has been on my mind for a very long time. Is a Ferrari an investable asset? Yes, it is, but that's not the reason why I should buy one. You should so, buy so, one like Taylor. buying a, a work of art because you love it and because you can enjoy it. And then maybe later it pays you back with uh, a good return. But that shouldn't be the motivation. All right, and you just give us one of your mantras in life, just because we want to just get some wisdom from you this evening. <laughs> because we've always said it at Hollard and it's worked so well for us. Don't take yourself too seriously, but take what you do damn seriously and make sure you succeed. Amazing, very wise words. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. I'm sorry we're running so short on time tonight. Thank you for being with us. We hope that you enjoy the show. And uh, yeah, keep driving. <laughs> All right, All right, next we are going to be crossing over to one of our judges who's also been with us for a long time, Johanna McCocky, who is a judge in our Europe Car Women in Leadership Award. Um, Johanna never fails to look magnificent, so as soon as we get her up, I'm sure that we will be seeing that uh, she definitely has what, what it takes. Every single year, year she, she astounds us, and no doubt, there she is, sparkling and glamorous as usual. So, Johanna, we have to ask you, we're on the red carpet, who are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing a little dress. Let me show you guys. Hello. Whoa. Yes. That's, That's a, lot a lot of dress. dress. Oh, my dear. A little dress I found on my Europe trips. And um, it's been wonderful at least to be able to get dolled up, especially this year. I think it's really um, uplifting to be able to put on some makeup and put on a fancy dress and uh, be tuned in. I mean, uh, you guys have done remarkably so. Always happy to be part of the Jewish Achievers Awards. Amazing. Well, we love having you. You are an absolute, you add glamour to our entire event. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. And we will hopefully see you back every single year. Have a beautiful evening. And you do look magnificent. So I hope you've got lots of people around you to enjoy it. Thank you so much, Dana. All right, moving on to another nominee, Shraga Jameson, one of our nominees in the Kirsch Family Entrepreneur Award, who was the founder of Aquazania and um, has realized the value in water. And uh, really, uh, obviously, we know that they say that the Third World War will be fought over water, so maybe he saw that before many of us. So um, as soon as we had Shraga up, we can even ask him about that. Um, but I must say that just a list of nominees that we've had this year have been outstanding. The caliber that we have had has been fantastic. And, and I think the judges are amazed every single year. Shraga, how are you? Good, thank God. Good. Good. I wanted to ask you, Shraga, because you definitely make a statement with that beard. Is that part of a fashion statement? Um, it's 35 years worth of fashion statement, if that's the case, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, sorry, we are running short of time, so we wanted to thank, thank you. Good luck to you, and we hope that you have a wonderful evening. We hope that you enjoy the event, and lovely to have you part of it this year. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Next, the woman that we are bringing up is Glyn Wallman. She is a nominee in the Europe Car Women in Leadership Award. She is absolutely no stranger to South African society because with the Angel Network, she has absolutely taken the hearts and minds mind of, of South, South Africa. Africa. Glyn, how are you this evening? Hi, Dina. Very good. Thanks. Lovely to see you. Glenn, Glenn, thank th you. We are running short, but just tell us quickly, what has been your highlight for the year? I mean, you've done so much good. You're just phenomenal. I think the highlight has been that we've been able to help well over 200,000 people across all nine provinces. And we've supplied close to 3 million meals. So we're very proud of that. It's been a major highlight. That, that has, has been, been fantastic. And I just want to ask you one more thing as well. What are you going to do next? Do you ever sleep? Not as much as I'd like to. Whatever's on the table tomorrow is what we'll handle. As the appeals come, so we handle them. We don't know from day to day what's coming. 
Well, well you, you are, are amazing. amazing. We thank you for all your work. We thank you for all your effort. And good luck to you, the Angel Network, and all your little helpers, because you are phenomenal. Now, the time has flown. The hour has gone by. I don't know how, because we've had so many amazing people to talk to. But we hope that you've enjoyed the updates, the glitz, the glamour of our red carpet, our amazing nominees. And I believe that we have our chairman, Howard Saxton, on the top of a building somewhere in Johannesburg, eagerly waiting to kick off the evening and give us the official awards. So we hope that you grab a drink, sit back, relax and enjoy because you are certainly, certainly in for a treat. For those who we didn't get to tonight, we so apologize. There are just so unbelievable, so many unbelievable people that we just really wish we needed about five hours just for our red carpet. But good luck and enjoy the show. For the past 21 years, we as a community have gathered in hotel ballrooms and convention centers to celebrate the remarkable and disproportionate contribution made by the Jewish community to the development of the post-apartheid South Africa. Traditionally, as the Jewish Achiever Awards would begin, we would invoke a roll call of past winners, hallowed names like Donny Gordon, Nati Kirsch, Sol Kersner, Helen Sussman, Philip Tobias, Brian Joffe, Stephen Kossoff, Adrian Gore, Johnny Clegg and so many others as we acknowledge and delight in the extraordinary, the profound and the vision of so many members of our community in the fields of the arts, the sciences, in sport, business, entrepreneurship, community service, humanitarian endeavours and leadership. Usually, at the start of the APSA Jewish Achieve Awards, we had regularly commenced with an opening video of the year in review. We planned on showing you the American election campaign culminating in the ultimate victory of Joe Biden and the first woman of color as heir apparent to the White House. We would have rejoiced in the Abraham Accords and the warming relations between Israel and the Muslim world, the UAE, Bahrain and now Sudan. We would have played clips of the Zondo Commission and laughed and cried at some of the witnesses and mourned the death and sudden resurrection of SAA. More poignantly, we would have marked the once in a generational genius of Chief Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs and lamented his passing. The Yiddish expression teaches us that Mensch tracht und Gott lacht. When people plan, God laughs. When we started planning tonight's event over a year ago, we did not expect to be playing hide and seek with a virus. We did not predict that the world would be gripped in the vice of a worldwide pandemic that has so sadly claimed the lives of so many in our own community as its victims. It is in their memory that this year, we commemorate something slightly different. We honor so many in our community who have fought and contributed once again in such an extraordinary and disproportionate fashion in the fight against COVID-19. How is it possible that a community as small as ours has produced people like Professor Barry Shubu, head South Africa's COVID vaccine council, and Professor Lucille Bloomberg and Dr. Cheryl Cohen of the NRCD who have been instrumental in the fight against the novel coronavirus in South Africa? There have been doctors and nurses and psychologists and specialists who have absolutely shone. Organizations, so many organizations like Hatsola, the Chev, the CSO and Ezra in Cape Town, Yad Aron, Cape Jewish Care organizations who've taken responsibility for our own community in Johannesburg and Durban and Cape Town and Port Elizabeth and Pretoria and East London. And then there have been so many Jewish and Jewish led organizations who have taken care of the needy and the destitute in rural areas and in townships. Organizations like Africa Tikkun has fed literally tens of millions of people around South Africa. Feed SA, Corona Care, Africa Awake, Kadena, African Harvest, Courage, Fingertips of Africa, or organizations like the Angel Network, who under the leadership of Glenn Wallman has built a network of thousands of people who have delivered clothing and blankets and food to millions of South Africans. 
The list of people and organizations is simply endless. No matter where you look, inside every nook and cranny, in the fight against the crisis of our generation, our community has seen thousands of Jewish people, business leaders and humanitarian icons. This year we cannot just recognize nine winners, we as the Board of the Jewish Report feel the need to pay tribute to literally hundreds of South Africans who have been an Ola Goyim, a light unto the nations. Tonight we announce our COVID role of honour to recognise and pay tribute to so many South Africans who have sacrificed so much for a better South Africa during the pandemic of 2020. In fact, probably not since the heyday of the struggle against apartheid has there been a moment where we as a community should be more proud of what we have done and achieved. For the past 17 years, APSA have walked this journey with us. We are so delighted that we can join together once again at the APSA Jewish Achieve Awards to recognize what we as a nation can achieve when we work together for the betterment of all the people of South Africa. Our role of honor and our winners tonight bear testament to a remarkable community, although small in numbers, rich in diversity, overflowing with kindness, generosity, and a passion. We are so delighted also to welcome back Europe Car, Kia, and the Kirsch family who join us once again in recognizing the heroes in the battle against COVID. We as a community have some very deep soul searching we need to do. COVID has accelerated everything and we need to reimagine what our community looks like in a post-COVID era. With shrinking numbers, evaporating resources and a community battling with the high costs of living and the after effects of an economy in deep peril. To quote the words of Winston Churchill, you should never let a crisis go to waste. So we at the Jewish Report, despite COVID, in fact because of COVID, have continued to publish the South African Jewish Report newspaper in hard copy and online because that's what our community needed. And because people were locked in their homes and even though it made no economic sense at all, we started delivering newspapers to people's homes, apartments and townhouses. Inadvertently during COVID, we started a Zoom TV channel that has created a digital town square for our community. A place where you can come kibbutz and laugh and bond and learn and teach and be entertained, informed and educated. During the past eight months, we at the Jewish Report have run more than 65 Zoom webinars for our community. Doctors, psychologists, entertainers, performers, exercise gurus, nutritionists. We have told the story of the Mossad spy from South Africa and heard from survivors of 9-11. We have tackled hard issues, addressed the issue of ISIS in South Africa, gender-based violence and how to ensure you don't have racist kids. We have also told the remarkable story of the rescue of Ethiopian Jews. The first time black people were taken from Africa, not as slaves, but to freedom. Our interview with modern-day leadership guru Simon Sinek attracted 34,500 people. Al Chaim toasted to the people of South Africa, 32,000 people watching live. How to kickstart the South African economy was so popular that when Tito Mboweni, the Minister of Finance, tried to gatecrash the webinar, there was simply no space to let him in. To date, more than 600,000 people have viewed our webinars for as far flung places as Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Costa Rica and Brazil. And so all of the money raised tonight goes to support the free publication and distribution of the South African Jewish Report newspaper, its news websites, its webinars, and the remarkable service it provides to our community in South Africa. There are so many people to thank. The remarkable committee who put together these amazing awards, APSA, our title sponsor, and our other amazing sponsors, the 12,000 people who voted for our finalists, the four panels of judges and auditors who oversaw the entire process, the amazing board of the Jewish Report, which I'm so honored to chair, a world-class editor and editorial team, a dedicated CEO and sales team. All of these people do what they do to serve you, a community of which we are so tremendously proud. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the sun sets over South Africa tonight, welcome to the APSA Jewish Achiever Awards 2020. Your host for this evening, 
superstar, comedian, and the talented Gilly Apter. Thank you, Howie. I have always wanted my name to be shouted from the rooftops. Hello and welcome to the Jewish Achiever Awards 2020. My name is Gilly Apter and it is my absolute honor to be your host tonight. Let me say that this year, if you're still standing, you are a Jewish achiever. Now I know what you're thinking, but I haven't achieved anything. Hello, you survived a pandemic. You are a Jewish achiever. I know what else you're thinking, but I'm not Jewish. Nonsense. Anyway, if you feel you want to be Jewish and you aren't, there are two ways you can do that. One, you can convert, and the other is that you can just go and get yourself a Jewish mother. The jury's out on which one of those are easier. Gotta get a Jewish mother. Father can be anything. Father can be like a German shepherd. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> People are often confused about whether or not I'm Jewish. They usually come up to me and they say things like, so uh, tell me, what are you? Are you Greek? Are you Lebanese? Are you Portuguese? And I say, no, actually, I'm Jewish. And they go, no, 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 let me guess. Which is great, because that is such a fun game for me. People's inability to recognize a half Yemenite, half Romanian, South African-born Israeli Jew always amazes me. <laughs> Perhaps you were expecting another Jewish comedian, but honestly, Nick Rabinovitz cannot do all the shows, guys, okay? He's got three children and knock knees. I'm not sure how the latter affects his MC abilities, but that's not my problem. And if you're feeling bad because you think this is Lush and Horror, don't worry, I cleared this with Nick. And by cleared it, I mean I sent him a voice note, which I later deleted. <laughs> Some housekeeping. The bathrooms are wherever you put them in the last renovation. Uh, you can smoke wherever you want, and you don't have to put your phone on silent. In fact, you can keep your phone like it usually is on very loud and even answer it while I'm talking. I mean, who said there wasn't an upside to 2020? One more thing before we proceed. May I please ask the entire Jewish community to stop sending me links to articles about Melissa Cohen Biden, as well as any information regarding how you are connected to her. If one more person tells me, you know, she went to school with my cousin's nephew's aunt's sister's brother's husband's best friend, I will block you. There will be no further statements at this time. So let's get to it. But before we do, we want to see you enjoying the night with us. So please, WhatsApp your photos to us on 065 eight seven six six seven seven nine or post them using the hashtag hashtag jaa2020 another gentle reminder to please make sure you're wearing pants in the photographs and now to present our first award for the evening the lifetime achievement award in honor of helen sisman please welcome william kentridge I'm delighted to be presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award in honor of Helen Sussman. And we open the envelope. We take out the... And it says the Lifetime Achievement Award in honor of Helen Sussman is given to Sir Sidney Kentridge. This is a surprise. Um, it's fantastic that this is being given to my father and dad, to you watching in London, for this to be given to you. I think there's always a question of when you're young, everyone's father is a kind of hero. And as you grow older, one tempers one's judgments and finds a place how they actually fit into the world. So it's, it's always been odd to say, okay, this, this what I assumed was an exaggerated view of my father in fact has been borne out by the experience of his life. And I remember once when I was at high school a friend of mine who'd seen a photograph of my father of you dad in the newspaper coming up to me and saying I saw your dad in the newspaper he's, he's quite a jawler boy and uh, that suddenly gave an astonishing thought okay it's not only me that has a sense of his presence in the world and obviously for all of us here, all of you watching this program in different uh, places in South Africa and around the world, his stature as a lawyer, uh, his effect on so many other younger lawyers who have been led by his example, his demonstration of what it is to be an honorable person in the world has been incontrovertible. And uh, it's been astonishing journey of 65 years on my part seeing this and living the inside and the underbelly of so many of the cases and trials and the dinner table conversations with his 
straightforward description of what had happened in court and my mother's uh, incandescent outrage at the South African legal system in which they both, uh, both practiced. Um, it's been an ongoing lifetime of pleasure at, in opera for my dad, of music of different kinds, of reading, and I think of family. We've, you're certainly the lodestar to which the family gathers in London, and that continues in your 99th year. And so I would say both on behalf of all the family and on behalf of the Jewish community in South Africa, and more than that, on behalf of all the people here, very happy that you have this award and big congratulations. He was a doyan of the bar. Little advocates always gossip about big advocates, so he was often a topic of discussion. He has, within his generation, been one of the leading lawyers in the world, really. He went on a British radio program called Desert Island Discs, where he explained uh, that he had acted for three Nobel Prize winners, Chief Latuli, Nelson Mandela, and um, Archbishop Tutu. It really brought me into contact for the first time with leaders of the African National Congress. And it was really an education in South African politics for him. Nelson Mandela accused with the others of plotting sabotage to overthrow the South African government by force. All the accused were simply acquitted, all not guilty. So of course I and the other members of the defense team felt very elated about it. It was the most political of trials in a highly politicized country but it showed the judiciary was still completely independent. It was a great day for the South African justice system. Come on down. Well, of course, everybody knew of these really big cases. Probably in those days, the one, the biggest of them all was the Biko inquiry, amidst international attention. And it was an extraordinary feat. Probably in his South African career, uh, I would have thought the highlight of Sydney's performance. We, we see a completely non-racial society. We don't believe, for instance, in the so-called guarantees for minority rights. Although I'd heard of Biko, I knew very little about him. I'd never met him. After his death, there was a tremendous outcry in the press, not only in the English language press in South Africa, but in the press press in, in the United Kingdom and the United States, which was a great surprise to me. To me, one of the most interesting things about it was not merely the final result, but that we were able in that atmosphere to get a completely fair trial. While the death of Biko was one of the low points of, uh, of the South African apartheid government's record, the actual inquest spoke very highly for the South African judicial system. Sydney rose to the position of absolute preeminence uh, at the Johannesburg bar. Uh, oppressed by apartheid, he would have nat quite naturally gone on to uh, the bench and become one of our leading judges. Of course, it was not to be conscientious lawyers seldom wanted to take appointments in South Africa and Sydney um, went to practice uh, in England and there too rose to become w one of the preeminent barristers uh, at the London Bar. Having moved to England, he created an indelible mark there. When the British Bar was threatened by uh, the state and had to bring proceedings against the state. The British Bar chose Sydney to represent it. I believe that that was uh, a high water mark in his career. I thought it was a great day when I went to Buckingham Palace and was knighted by the Queen tap on the shoulder with a sword. So I did regard it as some 
public recognition. I somehow had the idea that the work I'd done in South Africa also had a little bit to do with it, as well as my work in England. I remember telling my one of my grandchildren, the Queen taps you on the shoulder with her sword. And the question I got from her was, isn't that very dangerous? I would just like to congratulate Sydney on getting this award. What I would really like to say about his wife, Felicia. I think if Felicia was still with us, she would be sharing the award, this wonderful award that Sydney's getting. And I'm sure that he would be very, very happy. We're so happy to hear that you're getting this wonderful award and we want to congratulate you and tell you that we think you're the best person to get it at this stage. Sydney, it's a wonderful honor for me to um, wish you well in the receipt of this fantastic award. I know you've won many. Congratulations again. I'd like to say thank you very much for this very unexpected award. I certainly value it coming as it does from Johannesburg, which of, of course was my old hometown and my hometown for many, many years before I came to England. Uh, I had my bar mitzvah at the Yeovil Shul. My late wife and I were married in the Walman Street Shul as a boy before my bar mitzvah I was taught at the Yeovil Shul Cheder so I have a very very Johannesburg Jewish background of which I greatly value. I should also like to say that my grandfather who came to South Africa with his family about the time of the Boer War, someone whom I never knew but I knew a lot about, he was a cousin and I'm told he was a very considerable cousin. And he came to South Africa because he was, uh, he got a position as cousin of the shul at Freyheit in Natal, which then had a very considerable Jewish community. And uh, that is what brought the family to South Africa. And it's, uh, it's always been not what I'd call an orthodox family, but a traditional Jewish family. And my upbringing in Johannesburg was very much a Jewish upbringing. And so I'm very touched that the Jewish report in Johannesburg has thought fit to give me this award, which I greatly value. From one classic to another, ladies and gentlemen, here to perform his most famous Phantom of the Opera aria, star of the international production of Phantom, Jonathan Rocksmith. Heightens each sensation. Darkness stirs and wakes imagination. Silently the senses abandon their defense. Slowly, gently, night unfurls its splendor. Grasp it, sense it, tremulous and tender. Turn your face away from the garish light of day. Turn your thoughts away from cold, unfeeling light. And listen to the music. Music of the night Let your mind start a journey Through a strange new world Leave all thoughts of the world You knew before Let your soul take you Where you long to be
Beautiful. Thank you, Jonathan. Our second award for the evening is the Kia Community Service Award. Here to present the award, please welcome Gary Scott from Kia Motors, South Africa. With our six-month payment holiday, there's a spacious Kia Sportage for every family. Get it now and start paying six months later. Hi, my name is Gary Scott. I'm the CEO of Kia Motor South Africa. And we are thrilled to once again be part of the SA Jewish Achievers Awards. I don't think there's any reason for me to spend time lamenting this past year. We all know it was and still is a tough one. But that's exactly why I think awards and recognition such as these have become more important than ever. In the middle of all the negativity and uncertainty, we need to identify and celebrate every success that was achieved this year. As an organization, Kia encourages a positive outlook. When times get tough, we look for the opportunities which motivate positive action. I'm not saying we should ignore the negatives. We need to remain realistic. But by putting our energy into areas of positive progress, we build our resilience as an organization and as individuals. This outlook has encouraged Kia staff to use this unusual year to tackle areas and systems they felt needed to be improved. And the results, I must tell you, have been amazing. Kia South Africa has actually thrived in many areas simply because we chose to focus on the positive changes we could make instead of zoning in on the things we weren't able to do. And it's for this reason that Kia supports initiatives such as the SA Jewish Achievers Awards because it encourages and supports this value of positive action. We know firsthand how one small gesture can have an incredible ripple effect, and we will continue to support people and organizations who are determined to effect positive change, no matter the challenges they face. I'm honored to announce this year's winner of the Kia Community Service Award. The winner is Professor Barry Shoup. Barry is currently the chairman of SA's Ministerial Advisory Committee on Coronavirus Vaccines, and that's simply one of many ways he has dedicated his life to improving the lives of others. Congratulations, Professor Shu. His life's work has been saving lives. He's a passionate human being. He's just one of the most unique men around. It's fantastic that you're being recognized. Um, I know the last nine months have been really tough. So I thought Professor Shu was retired. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. When Barry left the NICD, he thought he was going to retire gracefully and improve his backhand at tennis. And I said to him, I said, Prof, this is your Queen Esther call. 
you know, your community needs you. We need you. You're the one who's going to save us. We need to urgently and dramatically escalate our response. As Chief Rabbi and having the, the responsibility of working together with the shuls, with our rabbis and shul chairmen, to be able to, to work out a plan of when to close our shuls, when to open our shuls. And uh, Professor Barry Shu was there every step of the way. If I had been in admiration of Barry prior to COVID, uh, I'm in awe of his incredible wisdom, but also his empathy. We at King David Schools were having to make the decision and then and the very first person we turned to and the community turned to was Prof Shub. So together with us, we reached the decision that it's time to close the schools preemptively. To be able to have a person of the experience and expertise, the national and international expertise of Professor Barry Shub was absolutely crucial in getting through this crisis. Like failures in the health system of South Africa's Eastern Cape have been exposed by the pandemic, that South Africa to a would experience a second key wave. Staff are on strike or sick with COVID-19. Uh, we are more prepared now. Uh, we do have a lot of knowledge now. This pandemic, our doctors became our protectors. Prof Shu was basically the general in understanding this enemy. His uh, responsibility in that ministerial advisory committee is to guide our country through quite a complicated terrain of what COVID-19 vaccines are going to mean. With him at the helm, the ship will sail quite smoothly. Mandate. You're not replacing uh, the original team. Just explain it to us. COVID-19 has obviously highlighted Barry's capacity in the world of virology and medicine. You've been our leader that has guided us through so many epidemics in the past. I'm so proud that we have a person of this caliber who is so deeply committed to our community. This award is what he did for South African Jury during COVID. He, he learned about the mistakes Jewish communities have made in France and made in uh, England. And he was also not scared when he wanted to shout at the community and we weren't behaving. He told us as well, you know, he told us. I think you have lots of, uh, lots of wisdom, lots of experience, lots of knowledge. And sorry about the backhand of tennis. I think that will have to wait for another year. Professor Shub, on behalf of the entire community, congratulations to you on this well-deserved award. Mazel tov, Barry, on this wonderful recognition and award. You really deserve it. My sincerest thanks to the organizing committee of the Jewish Achievers event and to the Jewish Report for honoring me with this very special and prestigious award. I am indeed deeply honored, humbled and gratified to receive it. In accepting this award, I would like to start off with just a few personal words of appreciation. Firstly, to my maker, my deepest and my most profound gratitude for all that he has given to me and for the exceptional kindness and benevolence that he has shown to me. For the most precious gift that he has given me, I can do no better than quote Winston Churchill. And I quote, my most brilliant achievement was my ability to be able to persuade my wife to marry me. End quote. My lifelong partner, my friend, my confidant, my support, and my source of encouragement through 51 years of marriage. My dearest wife, Barbara, to you goes my deepest gratitude. The other very, very precious gift that my maker has so kindly given to me is my dearest, wonderful family. Wendy and Lance, Richard and Kate, and Peter and Sam, and their respective families. We are a small family, but I can say with a very firm conviction, size does not count. This award is dedicated to recognizing service to the Jewish community. I am indeed greatly humbled to accept it. For me personally, it has been a great honor and an enormous privilege to have been able to give something back to this wonderful and very, very special community during the COVID crisis. 
I do believe that there are many others in our community who are at the least equally, if not more, deserving of this recognition for what they have done for the community. And many exceptional members of our community have played their indispensable part, providing the statistical and epidemiological data for planning, devising the safety protocols for schools, functions and schools. The GPs of our community who face what I believe to be the most difficult and the most demanding task of our profession. The specialist frontline healthcare workers in hospitals, the pulmonologists, the intensivists, the ICU nursing personnel and other support personnel. And of course, the crown jewel of our community, Hatsola, who has shone so brightly during the COVID challenge. In conclusion, I cannot leave off without acknowledging how very privileged I feel in belonging to this very special South African Jewish community. Sometimes it may take a crisis or a special challenge for us to need to take a step or two back and to reflect on exactly how blessed we are. From the Hebrew Kedisha to the Beth Din to the Jewish Report, we are undoubtedly and unequivocally the leaders of the world, Jewish and non-Jewish. Seeing that this audience is largely from the corporate and the business world, may I end off with an anonymous quote, which has particular reference to our community and the structures and its organizations. And I quote, if we count all our assets, we will always make a profit, unquote. Thank you very much. I'd like to once again remind you to WhatsApp us pics of you guys having a good time at home to this number, 065-876-6779. And just to be clear, we want pictures of you enjoying tonight's events, not pictures of your dogs or your grandchildren, unless they are watching, in which case, by all means. And don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag JAA2020. People, this year has been challenging. Two terrible things happened to me during lockdown, okay? One, I had a birthday. And the second thing that happened is I hurt my back. I don't know what happened. I was just, I was lying in bed and I turned 38. <laughs> Why did none of you look surprised? There were a few good things that happened during lockdown too. Before Rosh Hashanah, a little boy went viral. In a good way. A video of the adorable six-year-old Bibi Shapiro singing a passionate rendition of Avinu Malkenu was seen and enjoyed by people all over the world. Not long after this, our very own Honi G teamed up with Bibi for a duo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we went and asked Bibi and Honi to do it again. So here, across the oceans, the two South Africans unite again in Australia and Cape Town. Please welcome Honi G and Bibi. Good evening, Jewish TV. My name is Bibi. And my name is Honi. And, and we're back. back. So this is our second collab. Bibi's going to start us off with Ose Shalom Bimamav, a song of peace. And I'm just going to back him up. We can't wait to sing for you. Ose Shalom Bimamav Uya Ose Shalom Shalom, Yaseh Shalom. 
Our next award is the Art, Sports, Science and Culture Award. Why are those four things rolled into one? I can't tell you. That's like making an award for cheesecake, falafels, brining and guilt. Oh wait, that actually does make sense. My mother would win that award. Anyway, I don't make the rules, I just read them. I'd like to call on Paolo Cavalieri to present the award for Art, Sport, Science and Culture. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The winner this evening, Jody Schechter. Jody was born into a car mad family in 1950 in the city of East London. He served his apprenticeship with his father, not being particularly keen on the academic side of life. But he had one single goal in mind, and that was to become Formula One world champion. In his early 20s, he moved on after successes in South Africa to England, where within two years, at the age of 22, he participated in his first Grand Prix for McLaren in the United States of America. His third Grand Prix he was in the front row of the grid and leading the pack for 40 laps before being forced to retire. Jody raced for the Tyrrell team, in addition to McLaren, for a out-the-box startup team called Wolf Racing, and with those teams achieved third and second place in the World Championship. Enzo Ferrari approached him twice first time turned down to race for his famous team. And so, in 1979, Jody was at Ferrari. The turning point in that season was the Monaco Grand Prix, where he dominated everything. And so he arrived in September to the Italian Grand Prix, where a win would not only secure him his 10th Grand Prix victory, but also the World Championship. If you ask any Formula One driver, from Juan Manuel Fangio of the 50s to Lewis Hamilton today, they'll tell you that if they could script their best win and career, it would be first place, Monza in Italy, in a Ferrari, plus the World Championship. Only one person has ever achieved that, Jody Schechter. Last year, celebrating the 40th anniversary of this championship win, he was asked, Jody, what would you do, or what would you say to a younger you today? He reflected for a while and said, simple and very South African from a down-to-earth point of view and so perfectly Yiddish in my opinion. Do your best and the rest. Congratulations Jody, so proud of you and what an honor for me to be able to have said these few words. We're in great company tonight, thank you. Jody uh, is, is one of the most competitive people I've ever known in my entire life. Consistent and solid performer. He's a tough guy. Extremely competitive. He's hugely talented. Doesn't suffer fools gladly. A guy's guy. He's a hard taskmaster. Hard work, dedication, and mental strength. Always motivated by the, by the fear of losing rather than the glory of winning. He's still rough around the edges, and he won't mind me saying that. <laughs> I think his South African heritage is still very strong in him. If you look at how many people uh, try and become Formula One drivers, let alone be successful and world champions. Uh, so I think what he accomplished um, was extremely difficult. I say life was a pit stop. And that's why he became so successful, not just in motor racing, but also in business. And now in farming and in, in all that he does today. He's the most uh, clever, stupid person I know. <laughs> he, he was very aggressive in a car. I've known him as a friend and as a competitor. As a competitor, he was a pain in the ass. And I think one of the very impressive uh, stats, if you'd like, is he won with three different teams and a lot of Grand Prix drivers have success with one team 
the, the right place at the right time. But Jody won with, I think it was three teams, Tyrrell, Wolf, uh, and ultimately Ferrari. And uh, not many Grand Prix drivers have won in multiple teams. And what that tells you is they're an outstanding talent um, and it wasn't car specific. Spotted by the famous Formula One team, McLaren. The success of that season culminated in Jody being rewarded with his first Formula One Grand Prix drive. In 1973, that was his first year full-time in Formula One. Uh, Ken Turrell, the owner of the Turrell Formula One racing team, had his star driver and world champion, Jackie Stewart, moving into retirement, and so filled the number one seat and the team leader seat with Jody. He had his first Grand Prix win in Sweden. Jody also had the satisfaction of winning the South African Grand Prix. Enzo Ferrari offered uh, Jody an opportunity to drive for the famous Ferrari team, winning the Italian Grand Prix in Monza towards the end of the season in a Ferrari and the World Championship at exactly the same time. But that commitment and that um, dedication he has uh, is what's uh, made him successful in, in all of these enterprises. I think Jody would have been successful in selling candy. Well, I'm very proud that Jody is being recognized in this fashion. He, he's a very proud South African and uh, he carries the flag well. Well done, well done. Hopefully there's many more awards. Congratulations on your award. Well, what everyone should know is I'm much better at table tennis than he is. Dad, I just want to thank you for everything, all the help, all the love, um, all the support, and uh, I love you lots and congr congratulations on the award. First of all, let me uh, thank you all for honoring me at this stage of my life. It all seems such a long time ago. Uh, so I was brought up in East London, was useless at school, loved going to the workshop. My dad had a, a, a garage and worked on cars. He gave me a car, a second-hand Renault, to go to work and back. Uh, the first time after one time, it went to the first race. That was my first race. Did three years in South Africa. Probably my most enjoyable t t time in, in all my racing. Then I won driver to Europe, went to, to, to England, did Formula Ford, Formula 3 that year. And McLaren's offered me a Formula 2 driver, did Formula 2, and they gave me a Formula 1 driver at the end of that second year. Uh, because I was South African, they wouldn't give me a full-time uh, drive. Well, that's what they said anyway. Anyway, I took Jackie Stewart's place and uh, in the Tyrrells and was there for three years. Was third in the World Championship twice. Left that team and went to a small team with 20 people and Ferraris had 200 people. Came second in the World Championship. If that year possibly should have, whatever could have won the championship. Anyway, we were second. A year later, I joined Ferraris and won the world championship. A year later, I retired, went to America, started a company on the kitchen table, making and designing simulators to train police and military how to use guns. Uh, it was very successful. After 12 years, we were in 35 different countries. We had 95% of the world market. The, the last three years were 29, 60, $100 million sales. Uh, my wife dragged me back to England, um, she's English, and um, I thought I was really smart. So I bought two farms and built five factories and to produce the best tasting, healthiest food without a compromise. For 15 years I lost a lot of money and uh, probably one of my stupidest things and hardest things I did. Anyway, uh, the next career I'm looking for is on the beach. Um, I still feel myself very much South African. And, um, and listen, I'm an old wanker now. I just wanted to thank you very much for honoring me at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jody, for doing something to make Jewish people cool. <laughs> Honestly, how many actuaries do we need? 
And now to sing the all-time classic, Ness and Dorma. It's the all-time classic, Yudi Cohen. Nessun dorma, nessun dorma. Tu porra principessa nella tua fredda stanza. to present the Humanitarian Award in honor of Chief Rabbi Cyril Harris, please welcome a previous winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, Nati Kirsch. My great privilege to talk about my daughter Wendy Fisher, who is receiving the 2020 South African Jewish Reports Humanitarian Award in honor of Chief Rabbi Cyril Harris. As a father, I'm expected to talk well of my daughter, but I have something to say beyond what can be expected purely as a father. Brought about by her love and interest in art and her enormous knowledge of all that is important in the art world. Her expertise is globally recognized and Wendy has received remarkable acknowledgement in this art world. Wendy is the president of the Guggenheim Museum, a role she has held for nearly four years after having served as a member of their board for six years. She is respected and admired by all her colleagues as having done a sterling job in this role, 
is in a seriously difficult time for museums around the world, a sector particularly hard hit by COVID-19. More recently, Wendy created a unique online worldwide virtual university, recruiting renowned speakers, giving insights into a wide range of interests that are unique. It was inconceivable to imagine how successful this virtual university would become. Its importance is enhanced by, it, by this worldwide lockdown as we all need to be engaged and connected and stimulated. Virtual University has attracted thousands of viewers on almost a daily basis from around the globe, provides an interest for us all. The appeal of the University is due to the breadth and the expertise that she has brought in, something I believe not many others could have achieved. Wendy, I congratulate you on this award, so well deserved. As your father, I'm proud of your achievements and I believe all your university listeners around the world join me in celebrating you receiving this honor. Well done, Wendy. We understand people, you know, throwing fundraisers for this charity and that charity. We've never seen somebody with such a big heart and such a, a generous heart. She's one of the most exciting women I know. One of the most amazing human beings I've ever met in my whole life. The, the only thing she wanted was just to help. Wendy is South African. Her heart lives in South Africa. She and her family found themselves in South Africa over the lockdown. She offered herself, she offered her resources in helping and in uplifting the many people who were really being affected by the effects of COVID during that time. During COVID, our entire operation came to a standstill, did not know what I was going to do. And as usual, Wendy always steps in to help and offered to help feed these many people. When somebody needs help, you know, my mom's the first person to put their hand up to help them always. She's been a tremendous philanthropist to us, especially since COVID, it's unbelievable. Uh, she's given a huge amount of money. Through her, we've been able to feed 150,000 people every day. Wendy has been amazing to us. Uh, she's funded us from the beginning. Uh, so since we started the foundation, we went to almost every province. So we were able to feed through Wendy's support and our other sponsors. Wendy is so creative. She is always looking for the next wonderful innovation. On Zoom, created Lockdown University. Wendy called and she said, we're locked down in South Africa, we're going crazy, we're bored out of our minds. And she suggested that I start tutoring in Jewish history. It's a subject she knows well. I cannot tell you how exciting it's been. I'm expected to talk well of my daughter, but I have something to say beyond what can be expected purely as a father. Brought about by her love and interest in art and her enormous knowledge of all that is important in the art world. Wendy is the president of the Guggenheim Museum. She is respected and admired by all her colleagues as having done a sterling job in this role. The role that she plays widely in the arts is that she supports it from a variety of different vantage points. A4 is a not-for-profit free to public laboratory for the arts and by laboratory, we mean a site for experiments. She's active in processes and projects like Lalela in Cape Town, which is a, um, a grassroots initiative that looks at supporting young children who are in the most impoverished of conditions. She's as invested in the thinking and activities that occur in Lalela in Cape Town as she is in the support of another organization like MoMA PS1 in Queens. Through watching her generosity to people, she enabled us to follow her. Our friends and extended friends, the people that we knew when they were in need, 
she personally helped them as well. I could call my mom and say, hey mom, I know such and such is struggling, can you help them? And automatically yes, which is just unbelievably rare. A lot of what Wendy does and what she calls to do, a lot of it is quietly put together and pulled off effectively with a lot of impact on the ground. Mazel tov, Wendy. Congratulations on your award. We are so proud of you, an amazing human being, and we're so grateful for all that you do. We love you. God bless you. It's beautiful to see you acknowledged by the community. It's not why you do this, uh, but at the same time, it is, I think, appropriate and, is, and, and wonderful to all collectively surround you and, and appreciate the work you do. I wish you good health and happiness and the ability to continue to do this amazing work Wendy, I congratulate you on this award. So well deserved. As your father, I'm proud of your achievements. Well done, Wendy. Wendy, you've given us so much pleasure. Very few headaches. We are very proud of you. Not so much for what you have achieved, which is phenomenal, but for the love and care that you have given us as a daughter. I'm humbled by this honor and grateful to be here with you tonight virtually. Receiving this award made me reflect on my work over the last four decades and how I am directing my energies moving forward. This opportunity, of course, comes as we endure a global pandemic and the broader existential concerns that it brings. In these difficult times, when things seem sometimes so dark, I'm always invigorated by the words of Leonard Cohen. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. In looking for the light to lead us forward, I think about my youth, about how I was raised, about how that influences the path ahead. Coming of age in Swaziland was pivotal to who I am today. I remember our solitary house on the hill, the uneven dusty roads, and the bright starry nights. We did not have electricity in the early days, but had gas lamps and a fresh water tap in our garden. Our family values have always been to help others, so it was only natural that it was a regular occurrence for villagers to come retrieve clean water from our tap. There are countless examples like this from our youth, from our parents, that left a lasting and motivating impression on my siblings and me. Compelling us to continue to invest significantly in community and in philanthropy. 50 years later, my parents are supporting an initiative to help millions of people have access to clean water. My parents' values are embedded in our family DNA. From my energetic, innovative, and generous dad, Nati, I learned what it means to be a passionate visionary and entrepreneur. His mantra is to teach a man to fish so people can build on the support you provide and become self-sustainable. My elegant, wise, and regal mom, Frances, a matriarch in every sense of the word, has always prioritized family and encouraged us that we should look for opportunities to come together and really see each other. My mom's wisdom is simply that when people sit and break bread together, their shared humanity is what is felt, not their differences. Together with my siblings, Linda and Philip, we have carried the legacy of our parents forward, and I share this honor with them. Beyond what I have learned from my family, I have learned from my diverse and ongoing study of the role the arts play in society. Seeing art as a means to build and uplift community and catalyze innovation. COVID continues to have a tremendous strain 
on vulnerable communities around the world. We joined forces and worked together with this incredible and wonderful South African community to make a difference. I realized that an online academy with my brilliant friends was the answer to connectedness. The Lockdown University, a free online program of lectures, now has over 4,000 subscribers. As we look ahead, I want to encourage all of you joining us tonight to seek your own inspiration, to teach a man to fish, to bring light where there is dark, to come together to build strong, vibrant cultures and communities, and to step up to help people in need. As I live inspired by these values each day, I hope you're inspired on your own journey to embrace our shared humanity for the benefit of all. I'd like to once again thank the Jewish Report for this honor. It's particularly special to me to be noted here in South Africa, where I always feel most at home. And to my family, my children, and my grandchildren, you are my love and my light. Thank you and good night. From one remarkable woman to another, our next award is all about women. But first, we are very lucky to be entertained by yet another hero, Danny Beton. This talented woman is a cancer warrior who, while fighting her cancer with unflinching optimism, also took some time to delight neighbors by performing from her balcony in Seapoint during lockdown. I know what you're thinking. I also performed from my balcony during lockdown. <laughs> the difference, Beryl, is that Danny is a talented professional who has toured the world, and you went out with a pot and a wooden spoon, and you live in a gated community in Lanseria. No one could hear you, which is probably for the best. Please welcome Danny Beton. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm so happy to be with all of you tonight for this incredible occasion of the Jewish Achiever Awards. And I'm so excited to perform this next song for you. It's by one of my favorite Israeli singers. So I hope you enjoy it. Avir harim salul kayai
Thank you, Danny. That was beautiful. Our next award is the Europe Car Women in Leadership Award. Now, a lot of people tell me that we need more women in comedy, and to that I say, do we? <laughs> of course we need more women in comedy, but there's a lot of careers where we need more women. For example, terrorism. <laughs> where are the female terrorists? And I used to think there weren't more women terrorists because we're morally superior to men. But I know it's just because they're not letting us into the industry. <laughs> so this is the problem with a lack of representation. If young girls don't see female terrorists on YouTube and on magazine covers, how are they going to know what they can do? If you are an aspiring young female terrorist, I urge you to read Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In. <laughs> Here's what we really need, though. We need more women in magic. Have you ever seen a female magician? No, I hadn't. And actually, this one was really bothering me, so I did some research, because uh, I didn't know why. And it turns out there's actually a very good reason. It's because we're not as good as men at disappearing. <laughs> now, in a short while, we'll hear from our sponsor for the Women in Leadership Award, Martin Lydell. But first, let's take a look at the nominees in this category. At Europe Car, we believe that a little further goes a long way. Whether it's greeting you with a warm cup of coffee after a long flight or brightening your day with a pack of our signature mints, we pride ourselves in going that extra mile to make our customers feel just a bit more special. Our state-of-the-art fleet and three-step booking system makes it easy to book everything from chauffeur drives and airport transfers to van and car rentals. It's no surprise then that through our extensive footprint and commitment to exceptional customer service, we've been awarded the title of Africa's leading car hire company at the World Travel Awards for many years in a row. So, whether you're renting a runaround or executive vehicle for your next business trip, a 4x4 to just get away from it all, or a versatile SUV for the holidays, you can trust our range of quality vehicles. Europe Car moving your way. My name is Lucille Bloomberg. I've enjoyed a wonderful career in clinical medicine, infectious diseases, microbiology and public health. These have all come together in my 18 years at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, responding to many outbreaks, for example, cholera, Ebola, and now COVID-19. And I also initiated a new COVID hospital surveillance program and I'm so proud of the team who are taking this forward. My name is Jade Rumpel. AYEKA is an organization that was started in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the spirit of communal responsibility, AYEKA connects givers with the opportunity to donate to vulnerable families and individuals. A community-driven and forward-thinking initiative run by young professionals, AYEKA operates with full discretion to preserve the dignity of its recipients and is rethinking charity for the digital age. AYEKA's mission is to restore the dignity of our recipients with a weekly delicious Shabbat hamper that feeds their bodies and nourishes their souls. I am Glenn Wallman, founder of the Angel Network. What started off as a grassroots charity has evolved to include thousands of people doing good across our country. And while we began as an organization giving a hand up, currently it's all about handouts to prevent millions from dying of starvation. The Angel Network connects people, enabling them to make a difference and do good. Thank you. I'm Helen Fraser. Founder and Operations Director of the National Children's Charity Foundation, assisting 73 children's organizations, which includes almost 15,000 children, with the provision of groceries, cleaning materials, toiletries, school and educational needs, as well as the infrastructure renovations of homes and the provision of kitchen and housewares to make the lives of these children as comfortable as possible. Hi, I'm Claire Yeager, co-founder of UBC Global. The corona pandemic has caused a lot of upheaval for many people, not just the illness and spread of infection and the isolation, but incredible financial upheaval also. We at UBC Global have been focusing on using ultraviolet light to curb the infection in many businesses, hospitals, police stations, old age homes and private homes. The biggest disruption during COVID has been the financial impact and the complete shutdown of services and businesses. Our aim at UBC Global is to ensure that businesses can return to full throttle without endangering anybody's health. 
Hello, my name is Dr. Marlene Wasserman. I'm the creator of the Dr. Eve brand. 27 years ago, I pioneered the idea of sexual health and sexuality in this country and beyond. I really do believe that everybody has a right to attain the high standard of sexual health, which includes sexual pleasure as well as sexual justice. I want to thank the Jewish community for honoring me. I really feel blessed that I have been recognized by my own community in my own country. So thank you so much for this honor. I'm Kim Lieberman and I'm a conceptual artist. The concepts that I draw into my work are that of human connection, influence, or how we impact through history and over geography. What has been pivotal for me as a focus in my work recently has been that concept of wild integrity. People who against all odds stick to their vision and are able to use a wildness of being to move the world to a place where leadership has morals, values and integrity. Hi, I'm Suzanne Ackerman from Pick and Pay. I am so immensely proud of our unbelievable teams on the shop floors around the country in nine provinces and over 980 stores who have sourced, packed and distributed over 22 million meals throughout the lockdown pandemic. A huge thank you must go to our people on the shop floor, to our customers, to society at large, to our sponsors who have helped us feed the nation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelley Frankel, Head of King David Senior Primary Linksfield. I've been in education for 43 years, 31 of which I've been at King David. In my 12 years of leadership, I've been inspired by mentors, teachers, children and parents. And I do hope that in some way I've made a difference in their lives too. My name is Ariella Rosenberg. I'm the CEO of Ort South Africa. I believe that education is the one thing that can really impact on the way we live our life. This is why I'm so excited to lead in these times. I'd like to strengthen Autist A position as a trendsetter and a leader in education and skills development so we can reach and impact more communities and bridge the divide in education inequality. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lorraine Schrager, Principal of King David High School, Linksfield. I feel it's so appropriate to quote the incoming First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden, when she wrote in her memoirs that being a teacher is not what I do, but who I am. It has been my honor and privilege for 37 years to work in Jewish education under the South African Board of Jewish Education. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mandy Muchnick, the Africa Chair for One Young World and FinBiz 2030. At One Young World, we bring together over 1,500 of the brightest young minds from 196 countries around the world to debate and formulate solutions to the world's most pressing issues. Africa's population is growing rapidly and will form a major component of the global population by 2030. We need to ensure we take up an equally meaningful seat at the global table. At One Young World, we ask ourselves, what would the world look like if global superpowers had been friends when they were 25? And in my generation, we're determined to find out. Hi, I'm Cheryl Katz. I am very proud to be representing the community. I'm the only Jewish woman that has multiple businesses in Clarksdorf, being two chats franchises, a glass for franchise, and a property company. My passion, however, is rotary, SANBS, SAP, and the Hevra Kedusha, of course. Desmond Tutu once said, do your little bit of good where you can. It's the little bit of good put together that makes a difference. Thank you. My name is Professor Cheryl Cohen. I head the Center for Respiratory Diseases and Meningitis at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. My team is responsible for monitoring respiratory infectious diseases and outbreaks for South Africa. And so we have been at the center of the response to COVID-19 and we diagnosed the first case in South Africa. We also have an intensive research stream and are studying the burden and transmission of COVID-19 so that we can project better the future epidemic trajectory and guide rational vaccine distribution should a vaccine become available. Hi, I'm Romy Levenstein. FeedSA is an NGO that sets up feeding schemes and community developed projects in formal settlements without, throughout the country. 
Our beneficiaries include creches, after-school programs, community centres, home for mentally and physically challenged, hospice, as well as the bedridden and elderly within our community. Due to the emergency of COVID-19, we launched a special project with the intentions to provide aid to the people whose livelihoods would be badly affected by the virus. Hi, I'm Roxy Prebatch. Um, the campaign we launched was called Kunye. It is a social media campaign with the goal to raise funds to provide bulk essential products to vulnerable households during a period of reduced and in many cases, no income. We packed and delivered hampers valued at 480 Rand that contained a variety of cleaning materials, personal hygiene products and non-perishable foods suitable to assist a family of four for up to two weeks. By the end of July, we had packed and distributed 20,000 hampers around South Africa, assisting 80,000 individuals with essential aid during a time of intense insecurity. Hi, I'm Genevieve Solomons. Whether you have contributed personally or as a company or corporate, we thank you. We understand that during times of such financial uncertainty, this has been a sacrifice. Thank you for believing in us and thank you for doing your part to help your country, together as one. My name is Yael Geffen. I'm the CEO and a shareholder of Sotheby's International Realty South Africa. I just won top women in property in South Africa, which really excites me as there are too few feminine leaders in real estate, even though the aging population is mostly female. Since I became CEO, there are many new business owners in real estate that are female as well as managers. I'm currently completing my certification in coaching in feminine power, the global movement, because I aim to inspire other females to be leaders in their field in South Africa. I'm Corrie nelson Java, and I'm a founding member of the Jewish Interactive Team established in Johannesburg over 10 years ago with the generosity of the Glatt family. I wrote and produced our first product, Shabbat Interactive. Today, JI has grown to be the Netflix of Jewish and Hebrew educational interactions for young children, used in schools and homes in over 100 countries. Since COVID began, we have provided the online Jewish resources that teachers have desperately needed. Just this year, over half a million times, a Jewish child somewhere in the world has played a JR game, ensuring joyful Jewish learning and hopefully instilling a lifelong love of their Jewish heritage. Hi, I am Pam Cantor. I am a mom to three beautiful children and a passionate teacher. Teaching in a public school where most of our children come from underprivileged backgrounds, during the COVID pandemic, my heart broke for the children not receiving any formal education. Hence, on the 14th of April 2020, the Read for Hope initiative was created. Read for Hope sends stories through videos and voice notes to many different communities around South Africa. Our goal for Read for Hope is to bring meaningful change in the lives of children through the love of reading and learning. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Francis Vuyo Krok. Vuyo meaning joy and happiness. This name was given to me by the ladies in the communities I work with. I run a social impact company that works with different businesses, MPOs and individuals to create positive, sustainable change. We run various projects, such as establishing Corona Care with a team, which distributed food parcels to 150 organizations nationally and building schools. We believe if you share facts with people, they will feed their mind for a moment in time. But if you awaken curiosity, they will feed their own mind for a lifetime. Thank you very much. I'm Lauren Gillis, the founder of Relate, a not-for-profit social enterprise that uses the tool of a bracelet to create jobs, earning opportunities for unskilled, unemployable, very vulnerable people, old and young. We raise funds for charitable causes and connect humanity. In the past 10 years, we have raised over 64 million rand from the sale of 4 million bracelets globally. We've invested this money into people and organizations in need. My name is Professor Jeannie Zidal Rudolph. I was privileged to receive the very best music education and mentoring possible in South Africa and abroad thus becoming the first woman in South Africa to get a doctorate in music composition, a male-dominated area, and being honoured by this government to produce the new composite South African national anthem, 
voted by The Economist in 2019 as the best anthem in the world. My academic and professional achievements have put me in a distinct leadership position, enabling me to give back to the people of South Africa by empowering women in music and mentoring young black composers. Hi, my name is Rona Solomon. I'm the CEO of Complete Care Group, a nursing agency. We have been very involved, especially during the period of COVID-19, in helping people stay at home and out of hospital to be cared for in their home with their loved ones surrounding them. I'm also extremely excited to say that we're now involved in rapid COVID testing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to introduce the Eurocar Women in Leadership Award to you this evening. It has been a challenging year for almost all individuals and businesses, and I'd like to congratulate the Jewish Report and the Jewish Achievers Awards on putting on this innovative online event and allowing the show to go on despite the challenges. We would also like to thank them for their generous partnership allowing us to sponsor this award for the last six years. We are grateful for the opportunity and your efforts in putting these prestigious awards together. I would also like to thank our panel of judges, Dawn Nathan-Jones, Dorian Wheel, Taryn Marcus and Joanna McCocky, who have all given so selflessly of their time and expertise over the last years. We are sincerely grateful for your passion and enthusiasm and what you do to promote and elevate this important category. Through the award process, we have been privileged to be exposed to and learn more about an incredible set of individuals who have achieved remarkable success in business, social projects, professions, sport, art, music and culture. What the candidates have achieved is exceptional, particularly if one considers the unique challenges that they've had to overcome. They are impressive by any measure. We hope this award helps to highlight the significant and important role played by women and in so doing encourages others to reach their full potential. As in every year that we have participated in the Women in Leadership category, we were once again presented with a phenomenal list of nominees. We are delighted that the award creates a platform where their stories, learnings, passion, compassion, drive, discipline and tenacity can be shared and celebrated. Selecting the winner from such an auspicious list was an incredibly difficult task with long debates to reach consensus. This year, our country was exposed to additional challenges due to COVID-19 and the national lockdown. Almost without exception, the candidates nominated in this year's award have made significant impacts during this extremely challenging time with feeding schemes and various other programs to help the most vulnerable in our country. We are truly inspired by what you have done for our fellow South Africans. We would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the nominees and thank them for so bravely, humbly and openly sharing with us. It is a privilege for Eurocard to contribute to providing a platform that highlights and celebrates your remarkable achievements. Finally, I would like to congratulate tonight's award winner. The breadth and scale of your achievements and the contributions that you have made are remarkable, truly impressive and absolutely inspiring. You've done amazing work in making this country stronger and creating a brighter tomorrow. Without further ado, the Eurocar Women in Leadership Award winner is... Suzanne Ackerman Berman. Suzanne has, has touched me in the way she touches the world by striving to always do good. She said right in the beginning, the world can always use one more kind person. Suzanne will put herself on any line. She has the most incredible determination. To understand Suzanne and what she does, you have to actually get to know the person. And the person is somebody who I believe every day wakes up are worried and caring about those in need. During the first week of lockdown, she asked me if I would project manage Feed the Nation for her. And from the first week of lockdown, we started. Suzanne initiated Feed the Nation campaign with her determination, her tenacity, passion to assist the vulnerable and needy in various communities at large. A lot of companies, role models, individuals, saw credibility in the project and they, they said, listen, we want to join hands with you. I mean, we've raised almost 92 million rand in total. We went out looking for a way that we can make a difference to, uh, to people that were battling in South Africa, uh, specifically with, with the most basic of needs, which is food. Suzanne was instrumental in helping us, guiding us, and then giving us the opportunity 
uh, to work with Feed the Nation. She has a, an enormous capacity for just reaching out to people who need help. And I think it's just part of her DNA, part of her makeup. She rallied every run she was connected to, and together with Pick and Pay, she has fed 22 million miles to date. I mean, that is such an accomplishment. She will find her way into the townships, into the areas where the, the need is. Uh, she'll be right there packaging. Suzanne will probably be upset with me, but I'll hopefully hug and love her afterwards. If you want to see leadership skills, watch them in a time of absolute crisis. But Suzanne herself contracted the virus and you would never have known because she continued to operate with everybody else's priorities more important than her own. In these extraordinary times that we are all facing as individuals, families, society, in fact humanity as a whole with the threat of the coronavirus, we all need to regroup and look at how can we do things differently. Suzanne, we just want to say thank you to you and your team at Pick and Pay and Boxer for all the help that you've given us. We were able to travel 16,000 kilometers during lockdown and we had a Pick and Pay and a Boxer truck wherever we went to make sure that we would help as many people as we can. To be honest, that Suzanne was probably brought in this world to be there to care, nurture and change others' lives. It's so well deserved. You make me exceptionally proud to be able to call you my sister and my friend. This is an opportunity for you to spread your example further and wider and to encourage others and inspire others to do what they can do. Tonight, you're not giving, you are receiving. And I'm so, so proud to witness this moment. Congratulations, my friend. I really am deeply moved and honored to be accepting this award of women in leadership, particularly over the last six months of the pandemic that we've all coming through. I don't believe the times are over yet. It's been a terribly difficult time for each and every one of us. And often in the very worst of times, it takes hardship, trouble and challenges for the best of personalities and the best of people to come out. And I would like to thank our unbelievable teams on the shop floor, the frontline staff who kept our stores open, who kept our staff safe, and who kept feeding the communities. Over 900 stores have been sourcing, packing, and distributing food hampers over this difficult period. It's been quite a remarkable exercise where we've worked together as a team. We've all learned that we needed to come together. I just want to thank my colleagues who allowed me to step up to step into their space in terms of distribution and operations and to create this incredible program with them, with each and every one of them. I want to thank the organizers who've taken the time to arrange these amazing events right throughout lock lockdown. To the judges who took their time, their personal times on Sundays over the weekends to interview all of us. It wasn't an easy process, it was a little bit stressful, but to thank you and to the camera people to the technical people, those of us who are working under difficult circumstances. These are outrageous times. And I think that we've all learnt a new way of being. Einstein himself said that it takes for evil to perpetuate, a good man must do nothing. And I think what we've seen here tonight with all the awardees and you read the the briefs and the CVs of all the people who have come to the fore. The extraordinary work that is being done across this nation of ours makes us proud to be South Africans. A huge thank you to everybody, the customers, society, the community, for helping us feed the nation. Thank you. Mazel tov, Suzanne. That is such an amazing accolade. We're the Maccabees from the United States and the Cape Town Jewish community has asked us to sing a song for you to celebrate this wonderful award. But first, let's meet the band. My name is Julian Horowitz, coming to you from my apartment in New York City. This is Morty, coming to you from Mitzpah Yericho, Israel. Hi, this is Ari Lewis, coming to you from Fairlawn, New Jersey. Hello, this is Mayor Shapiro, coming to you from New York, New York. This is Nachum Joel, coming to you from sunny California. 
This is Hanina Abramowitz coming to you from Englewood, New Jersey. Here we go. Lechadodi Likras Kala Pene Shabbos Neka That was Jewish, thanks to the Maccabees. Our next award category is the Kirsch Family Entrepreneur Award. Before I hand over to Wendy Fisher to announce the winner, here are the nominees. Hello, my name is Adi Kaimovitz and I'm the founder of a business called Virtual Actuary, which is an actuary consulting business. When we started Virtual Actuary, we set out to be a consortium of actuaries, a shared revenue model which is different to actuaries who are employees. And we've done phenomenally well over the last couple of years, and I'm delighted to be included here. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Brad Davis. I'm the owner and founder of Ready, Set, Deliver. I was retrenched from my job six days before shutdown in March this year. Being the go-getter I am, I decided to start doing collections and deliveries to people in the community who are unable to leave their homes. From there on, this business just grew. My company caters for people that need their shopping done, collections and deliveries, small furniture removals, and we have now extended in the assistance of driver's license renewals as well as license renewals. You could say I'm your personal assistant on wheels. Consider yourself ready, set, delivered. Thank you all. 
Hi, I'm Darren Meltz, Events Director of Secret Eats. Secret Eats is an underground dining concept for curious diners. You don't have any idea of where you're going, who's cooking or what's on the menu. We bring together talented chefs and incredible wines in unique venues. It's everyone's space to dream. That's what makes the perfect Secret Eats. You put your trust completely in us and join us for a one of a kind evening. My name is Shrugger Jameson. I was the CEO of Aquazania. I'd like to start with expressing enormous gratitude to Hashem. May He continue to bless each of us all with good health and success in all we do. What is Aquazania? A great idea and with the Rebbe's blessing and an obligation to help fellow members of the community. Coupled with a great plan, the very best product at the best price, the best systems and the best people. People who I've loved growing and grown to love and care for. All of which when added to the very best service and a serious passion for growth. 55,000 customers served by approximately 450 staff members. A very special thank you to all the staff at Aquazania, partners on this amazing journey. Hi, I'm Niran Asmus, CEO of The Sector Group. The Sector Group is a new industrial services group that reflects the true diversity of our society. Our group invests in established industrial services companies that provide specialized and critical services and support to the infrastructure of our industrious nation. Our coordinated, cohesive and progressive approach allows us to create more jobs and secure jobs by negotiating long-term sustainable contracts with listed corporates, mines and parastatals. I'm Mandy Fine, CEO of Fine Group Global. At Fine, we create marketing and communication strategies for clients around the globe. We do this by refining complex, technical and often clinical data into simple and engaging campaigns that change behaviours. We find the finest balance between art and science. I'm Nadine Hochter, I'm the owner of Sheer Bliss, a corporate and mobile massage provider in South Africa. We have three branches in Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban. We are the first in the world to have invented massage with virtual reality and marry these two experiences. This makes it possible for our company to not only deliver massages, but opens us up to the advertising and training industries as well. It's been phenomenal for our business and we just pray to grow from strength to strength. Thank you. My name is Yael Geffen and I'm the CEO and the shareholder of Sotheby's International Realty South Africa. When I took over leadership in 2017, it was on the back of a technical recession and a PR crisis in our company. During COVID, we've acquired new franchisees, grown in market share, we're ending the year off on a profit, but most importantly, I haven't had to close one office or retrench one staff member. I lead from a place of authenticity, lead your team the way you would like to be led, and I just won Top Woman in Property for 2020. My name is Rona Solomon. I'm the CEO of Complete Care Group, a nursing agency. 11 years ago, I decided to take a risk with financial gain in order to provide care for people in their homes. I saw a gap in the market. Through networking and marketing, I established Complete Care Group keeping people in their home instead of being hospitalized. During the COVID period, we looked after many people providing rapid result testing and COVID testing. Hi, my name is Joseph Wiener and I am the founder and managing director of Oxygenate South Africa. Everybody loves a good diamond, but what few people know is that diamonds are carbon under pressure. That is exactly what Oxygenate is all about. We take an unhealthy body, put it under pressure, give it some extra oxygen, and help it heal itself. Please come join us at any of our 10 branches nationwide. Hi, we are Annie and Larry Herders, owners of the newly launched Gourmet Grocer at Voodoo Lily, Arbor Cafe, the Dark Kitchen, and Kafefe Coffee Roastery, as well as the soon to be launched Bagel Burgers. The Gourmet Grocer has a carefully curated bespoke collection of artisanal foodie products, locally sourced from small suppliers. From healthy to decadent, we have it all. The Gourmet Grocer is the go-to meeting place for the local community and has an amazing neighborhood vibe and buzz. The success of our business during the current pandemic is in no small part driven by our very loyal community. Thank you to everyone for the amazing support.
When you think about successful entrepreneurs these days, names like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs come to mind. Big thinkers, creative thinkers, challengers, achievers. This is one kind of entrepreneur. There is another kind of entrepreneur, the kind that may not be a household name, the kind whose business provides goods and services that seem more ordinary than extraordinary, but are just as successful. Entrepreneurs who start, run, and grow strong businesses. Businesses that are the lifeblood of our economy and our communities, that serve our needs, and that create jobs. I have watched an entrepreneur like this my entire life. My dad. Tonight, we honor an individual who is an entrepreneur in the same light as my father. An individual who has built a business that provides a range of basic and industrial services, who has aggregated complementary businesses in order to provide a one-stop shop that is robust and more efficient. And perhaps the truest test of an entrepreneur is how they perform when the going gets tough. How they adapt and how they persevere. My dad knows something about that too. This year's honoree has done just that. Sustaining his business in the face of COVID-19, keeping his doors open, his employees working, and supporting our broader economy. True resilience. Liran Asnas has delivered for his customers, his employees, and his community. His company, Sector Group, is a manifestation of his vision and of his hard work. It is my honor to present this year's Kirsch Entrepreneur Award to Liran Asnas. Liran is always a step ahead of the rest of us. It's always a bit of a challenge to try and keep up with him. Immediately what struck me about Liran was uh, his absolute vision for us to become something more than what we thought we could be. Gazi Capital is um, an investment holding company and at the time we were looking for opportunities to invest as we generally do we private equity investors he was looking to then bring in his business redic services into the fold and create this something bigger uh, such as the sector group in fact more than a year and a half ago there was a transaction initiated um, led by Liran um, for the acquisition of tms into the sector group Iran played a key part in bringing about that group and immediately I recognized that, uh, that he's got that vision um, for us to become something more than what we thought we could be. He's very cohesive in his approach because he's dealing with many teams um, which are different management teams within each of the group companies. Liran is able to identify an opportunity and through strategic partnerships and an understanding of the industry has been able to, to really turn it into something that is truly remarkable. He is an inclusive leader, has a very positive mindset for growth, for job creation, which is exactly what we need as a country. We often have to, to hold him back a bit that um, we, we're still bedding down one or two um, current businesses in the platform, but um, it, it's exciting times and he sees the opportunities way ahead of, of, of all of us. Very humble as a person and very happy to learn from others, which I really appreciate as is well. I think he realizes that he's got a um, you know, the right vision to grow this entity or this group of companies to the next level. The group is becoming exactly what we set out two years ago. He's a real active community member in the sense that whenever there is a need, he is one of the first to step forward. When he ended up in 2019 not receiving the award, I was there on the night. That turned into a determination within the run. Knowing the run, he, he wanted to win it. You are incredibly deserving and we are most proud of you. Good luck in life and in business and stay true to who you are. 
It's important to us that you continue to lead. It's important to us that you continue to show that energy. I am very honored to call you my partner. Both as a friend and as a rabbi, a very big mazel tov. My blessing to you is that you just take this forward and carry on along the path that you are and only great success, happiness, health and all the very best that life has to offer. Thank you very much to EFSA and the Jewish Report for this Kirsch Entrepreneurial Award. Thank you very much to Howard Saxby for arranging this unbelievable event. Yes, once again, this time a bit different, talking to a screen. I want to take this opportunity to thank the people uh, in, in, in my life that's really been there for me. Uh, being an entrepreneur is tough, it's grueling work. It's not easy at, at all. So the first thank you needs to go out to my wife Tamara for everything that she's done. Uh, she's got a great business mind, so she's really up to date with everything that I'm doing. And she has never doubted me for one, but always been behind me. I want to thank my parents for uh, bringing me up and really giving me a great foundation to go and do whatever I want to do. And a special mention I want to make to my father-in-law, Mike, for his sound business advice. He's a great guy to have in your corner and really want to thank him for, for, for that. And then a big, big shout out to my executive team at the sector group, my board of directors. I am so fortunate to have all of you guys around and to be able to work with you talented people on a daily basis. I'm not going to name you, you know exactly who you are, but it's been an absolute pleasure and an unbelievable journey working with you. And I'm very, very excited what's, what we're going to do as a group into the future. Um, for whatever reason, I've always been involved in growing businesses and being an entrepreneur. Um, came out of my first job was in a commodity trading firm, joined me as a few people and we grew that into an international trading business. From that, bought a small business and we grew that to that business, brought Redact to 100 million rand turnover. We had an opportunity to buy another group five times our size. That, I don't know how we did it, we needed backing, kind of scrambled a bit of money that we had together. Had investors pull out at the last minute, had to phone a friend to come in and get involved, had to get some bank to bank us. Um, investor came, and the only reason why I think they came is my good friend Sean Lederman introduced us to them, and he knew I was, came to my house for a whiskey, so he kind of told the investor where I lived, and uh, that turned out well. We paid them back within six months. Today, we have business close to a billion rand um, turnover business got six companies within our group and it's really the foundation that we're looking at to grow the sector group forward into the future. Uh, just a shout out to all the people out there, to the South Africans. I know it's tough at the moment, there's challenges all around, but there's tremendous opportunity on the ground. If you're entrepreneurial, you're willing to put your, your head down, we've got everything here in South Africa. So a, a message of positivity, just go out and do it. I promise you it can be done. Congratulations, Liran. And here comes another brilliant woman, Kaylee Jo Levy. Kaylee Jo is amazing. She can sing, she can dance, she can act, and she can do it all in Yiddish. I'm telling you, no one can sit on spilkas like this woman. Did I use that right? Hi there, I'm Kaylee Jo Levy from Cape Town. I sing Yiddish music with my band Yiddish. It is such an honor to be performing for the Jewish Achievers Awards tonight. And I join you in celebrating the heroes of our community. We will be performing a medley of two of your favorite Yiddish songs by Mirbitz to Shane, which means to me you are beautiful, and Shane Vidi Lavona, which means as beautiful as the moon. Enjoy. <laughs> Deserve expressions that really fit you And so I rack my brain trying to explain All the things that you do to me Ba'mir bits to shame Ba'mir chos to chen Ba'mir bits to shame means that you're great Ba'mir bits to get Ba'mir chos to it It means you're the fairest in the land I 
could say Bella, Bella, even say a wonderbar. Each language only helps me tell you how grand you are. Bar mir bits a shame. Bar mir chos to chain. Bar mir bits a shame means that you're grand. Shame be the levona. Lichtig be the stern. Von Himmel am Atona. Bits to me zu geschickt. Mein Glück hab ich gewonnen, wenn ihn hab dich gefunden. Schön wie Teusen zoomen, hat zu mein Herz beglückt. Deine Zegele weißt wie Perle, wie deine Schäne Augen, deine Haare lach, deine Hände lach, hat mich zu gewogen. Schön wie die Lebone, lichtig wie die Sterne. Von Himmel am Marathonen, bist du mir zu geschehen. Our main sponsor has been a loyal supporter of the Jewish Achiever Awards for the past 17 years. Please welcome Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Retail and Business Banking, Bongiwe Gangeni. Can I? Can I save up for it? Can I move in? Can I move on? Can I secure his future? Can I keep it in the family? Can I bank here? Or even here? Can I keep my money safe? Can I get a little extra? Can I ask her? Can I manage one? What about two? Oh, hi, can I go back to school? With Absa? I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. We do more so you can. That's Africanacity. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the APSA Jewish Achiever Awards. We are honored to have such a long-standing association with this event. As we look back over the last few months and ponder the adjustments South Africans have had to make due to COVID-19, a standout feature has been the selfless contribution of people on the front line, the healthcare workers who generously supported patients and teams providing essential services during a challenging period. These individuals have emerged as the heroes of the pandemic. Against this background, the theme for the 21st anniversary of the APSA Jewish Achiever Awards, Heroes, was a fitting choice. Tonight, we also have an opportunity to celebrate and congratulate the heroes of the Jewish Achiever Awards, the nominees and winners. Your efforts to make a difference in communities and an immense contribution to the arts, sport, science, culture, entrepreneurship and business is an inspiration to us all. As APSA, we remain steadfast in our commitment to fostering long-term relationships with our clients, colleagues, and communities. In this regard, we are proud to be partnering with the Jewish Achiever Awards for the 17th consecutive year. While we have been vocal about our efforts to become a digitally-led bank and have made significant progress in this regard, now more than ever, 
Relationships are at the heart of banking. During a time of social distancing in particular, it is comforting to know that clients can embrace digital solutions for routine tasks with the reassurance that their banker is just a phone call away to support all their other banking needs. That spirit of embracing progress and technology while understanding that there is still an important place for the human touch makes APSA and the Jewish Achiever Awards a perfect fit. Now for the announcement of the award. The APSA Business Leadership in the Time of COVID Award goes to Dr. Jonathan Bloomberg. He was always a very smart kid. On the one hand, be so expert and, and, and so confident, but also to bring the kind of humility that I, I know in him. He's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Um, one of the most effective people I've ever met. See his patriotism towards the country. Johnny is an incredible South African citizen and nothing has demonstrated that as much as his response to this pandemic. In March this year, the president announced that they were establishing a solidarity fund. Johnny was at the center of this. The background to the solidarity fund is that business and government came to an agreement uh, as COVID was beginning to take hold in the country that we needed to have a single national independent body that would bring all South Africans together, unite South Africa in the fight against COVID-19. And so the first thing um, uh, Johnny did was to free up money to, to bring in RT-PCR, so that's diagnostic testing for COVID into this country. At that stage, you can imagine all the borders were closed, no planes were coming in, the epidemic was starting to take off, and um, we, we didn't have the ability to test in the public sector. So he was one of the first people uh, that Business for South Africa called upon uh, to weigh in on this crisis. I had an idea that um, to develop a hospital surveillance system um, to inform uh, what COVID was like in South Africa, but I had no idea how to move it forward. Uh, Johnny came along showing his great skills as a business leader and, and made it happen. And within a uh, a record one week translated this into a program that was delivering data. His role um, in the Solidarity Fund and in our country's fight against COVID is something that I think as a community we should be incredibly proud of. The Solidarity Fund is a completely unique concept. So in the six months of the Solidarity Fund's existence, uh, we've raised over three billion rand and already deployed over two billion rand of that money uh, in response to the pandemic. And Johnny played an absolutely central role in deploying the majority of the funds on the health response, uh, which included uh, expanding testing in the country, uh, procuring a very large portion of the PPE required for the country, uh, as well as some of the critical care equipment needed in some of the provinces that were struggling with the pandemic. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's a monumental task that has been undertaken and in a very short space of time. Congratulations and you know, keep doing this amazing work that you're doing because we need you. Johnny, as your friend and your colleague, I'm incredibly proud of you. Thank you, Johnny. Mazel tov, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny, and, and well done on your award. Uh, this is a very proud moment for the entire Jewish community, for your family and yourself. I can think of no one else in or outside the Jewish community that is more deserving of this award than yourself, I think. Johnny, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that, that you've received this award. So this award is, is significant and substantial and, and, and well deserved. Proud to be associated with him. So well done, Johnny, on this unbelievable award. I'm very grateful and humbled to uh, be receiving this award. Um, from the Jewish Report. I, I, I must say, I, I really didn't expect it. It came as a great surprise. One of the hallmarks of the work that I've done um, in, in dealing with COVID in the Solidarity Fund, but I think this is true for everybody who's worked um, in some way to deal with this pandemic, um, is that it's really been a question of teamwork. It's not a question of recognizing individuals. It's a question of 
thinking about how amazingly well our community has come together, um, how our government has worked with business, with the broad private sector. And, you know, that's certainly been true of the work I've done, which has been mainly in the Solidarity Fund. As many of you will know, the fund was set up very quickly uh, after it became clear how significant the COVID-19 pandemic was going to be in our country. It raised over three billion rand very quickly and very quickly deployed two and a half billion of that, uh, largely um, most of that in the, in the health response uh, to the pandemic. For example, providing PPE when there was none in the country for the public health care system, acquiring thousands of ventilators, supporting testing across the public health system. So a huge amount of good work but this was not the work of individuals. It was the work of a team of over 200 volunteers in the Solidarity Fund. And it was the, it was the work of tens of thousands of individuals and companies who, who provided money to the fund. And, and like the Solidarity Fund, uh, I think there was similarly a huge response right across our society. And it's no surprise that South Africa is coming together in this way uh, has meant that our country has coped better um, with this terrible pandemic than almost any other country in the world, despite our enormous challenges. And so in accepting this, I really do want to say I don't accept it for myself. Uh, I'd like to accept it on behalf of all of my colleagues in the Solidarity Fund um, and also all of my colleagues in Discovery, which has worked um, tirelessly as a corporation and all of its leaders have worked round the clock to support our four and a half million customers our thousands of uh, employer clients, um, and uh, very much helping government to, um, to deal with the pandemic. So on behalf of at least the Solidarity Fund and, and Discovery, but also I think of, of, of everyone in our country, uh, all of us deserve a pat on the back for just the enormous patience and, you know, and effort in dealing with this. As you all know, we aren't at the end yet. There's more patience, more effort required. Um, but let me just say I am really very deeply grateful and, and thank you very much indeed for, for recognizing me in this way. Thanks Bongiwe and Mazel Tov to Jonathan Broomberg. A lot of people are stressed about the economy. I wouldn't worry about it. Firstly, I don't have enough money but the economy makes a difference. But let me ask you something, honestly. When has this thing been good? The economy is like that friend. You know that friend with all the drama? Always got a story, always a problem. Everything's always happening to her. And then a huge thing happens, a global pandemic that affects all of us. And look, here comes the economy. Let me guess, economy, you're having a hard time. <laughs> Stay with us and welcome the dreamy Sharon Spiegel-Wagner, Laurie Strauss and Talia Kodesh, who are the Jewish Dream Girls. has been so hectic, right? Yeah. And a bunch of Jews got together and decided to achieve something this year. This year? Yeah, out of all years. Wow. Yeah. So I made a mashup about it. Really? Yeah. I think we should sing it at this Jewish Achiever thing. What should we call ourselves? Jewish Dream Girls. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Mask on or off? Off. Many nights we prayed with no proof anyone could hear In our hearts a hopeful song we barely understood Now we are not afraid, although we know there's much to fear We were moving mountains long before
fear When prayer so often proves in vain Hope seems like a summer's bird Too swiftly flown away Come on, come on For one night only Come on, come on We only have two nights We're running out of time And now I'm standing here My soul full I can't explain Seeking faith and speaking To present the ABSA Professional Excellence in the Time of COVID Award, please welcome Oscar Siziba, the Managing Executive of Regional Coverage, Relationship Banking, Gauteng and Limpopo Province. Twenty twenty has been a very challenging and extraordinary year for all of us in South Africa. The role of, of professionals in the health sector to get us through the COVID impact and period and beyond has been an extremely critical. Today's the APSA professional service in the time of COVID hour goes to Professor Mevin Mayer. He is caring, he is clever, he is clinically competent, and he is compassionate. And the law C probably is the complete doctor. Inspires other people. He's extremely uh, conscientious. Amongst the top representatives of our continent. A wealth of knowledge. I have never met anybody with such a wealth of knowledge. Intensely dedicated and focused. He is the reason why I'm alive today. He works day in and day out, just trying to save people's lives, yet when he's with you, you're the only person in the room. And Mervyn is a leading light in the field today, uh, not only in South Africa, but well recognized internationally. Mervyn has undoubtedly been a stalwart in, in managing it and actually putting ICU on the map and getting people, getting outside funders, and, and modifying doses and at the very forefront of managing these patients and most important, spending the time, the time and the effort of, of being in the hospital every day without, without, a, without a day's break. Our hospital was one of the hospitals that was earmarked initially as one of the hospitals for the pandemic. As the Premier, I had the responsibility to put together a, the COVID-19 advisory committee I had the honor to appoint him uh, into, into the committee. Uh, and I had no doubt that in that committee sits one of the top minds uh, in our continent. He had to um, draw up protocols for the recommended management of these cases, management in terms of uh, supplemental oxygen, um, of ventilation if that was needed, um, of drugs like antiviral drugs. Uh, Mervyn also managed um, and worked with, through public-private uh, pa uh, partnerships to get uh, an, uh, uh, enlarge the ICU, the intensive care unit now at this hospital. This is the general multidisciplinary intensive care unit has been almost doubled in size. I happen to also have a relative, my brother, who was under his excellent care. And that's how we connected a lot with Professor Mervyn. Mervyn has really made uh, an impressionable and lasting contribution in this COVID time. Mervyn understood 
in facing the pandemic, which was still to come to South Africa, that there would be a significant need for ventilators and that the country in that context was desperately short of that equipment. So he prevailed on the Gauteng province and did a lot of canvassing of big corporate South Africa to lend assistance to support the financial needs to buy these ventilators. And he sourced them, arranged them and brought in 300 ventilators to South Africa, a number of which were obviously used in his intensive care unit and hospital, but many were distributed around South Africa for the benefit of other doctors and patients and obviously helped to save many lives in the pandemic. He managed to get that intensive care unit in six weeks, which is unheard of within state. In fact, I must point out that he saved one of my own staff, got her into ICU, and if it wasn't for him, she would be dead. Mervyn does this for every patient, every single patient. Right at the beginning, before it really hit, Mervyn was one of the people that kept saying, COVID's coming, we need to prepare. And he started mobilizing staff and sorting out outside resources to try and get his dream ICU built. People often in times of crisis are not there, and Mervyn is there in times of crisis, but in other times as well. So, I mean, I'm a little bit sad in that it's only excellence in terms of COVID. I think it's excellence in terms of excellence. I can think of no other person that is more deserving of this award than you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And keep going. Congratulations. Mazel tov, mazel tov. Heartiest congratulations. There's nobody on earth that deserves this like you do. You're my earth angel. Well done. What an amazing hero you are, not only to me, but to so many people in this country during COVID, not during COVID, and all the time. You're the most kind, humble, special man, and I just adore you. As the Premier of Gauteng now, in my official capacity, uh, I, I'm, I'm deeply proud and privileged uh, to have met uh, someone like you who adds so much value uh, to the enterprise of uh, saving lives. Please remain the person you are, the professional you are, the doctor you are, and the human being you are. We're so proud of you as your older brother and also mom, the whole family. We really are proud to be sitting here and watching you receive this award this evening. May you go from strength to strength. And I do hope, Prof, from me to you, that you cut your hair a little bit before it did appear on screen. Good evening to the marvelous host, distinguished and honorable guests, delegates, nominees, and to all who have joined this function. I am absolutely humbled to be presented with this award and would like to extend a very gracious and a very humble thank you. This award and the acceptance thereof is really about a collective and cohesive effort on the part of all the wonderful healthcare workers who have been champions of care during this pandemic. And I'd like to pay homage and offer my own personal tribute to them all, the doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, laboratory staff, administrators, security people, porters, the catering staff, ambulance drivers, and many more. All the nominees are outstanding contributors and heroes, and this award is accepted on behalf of all of them and all those who have been involved in this pandemic. I would also like to extend a very gracious thank you to the South African Jewish Report and Mr. Howard Saxstein and everyone involved in this initiative. I feel enormously proud to be part of this special and unique community. To APSA and all the sponsors, and to the magnificent social responsibility partners of some of the projects and initiatives that I have been involved in. Too many to mention by name, and all wonderful people. But in particular, huge thanks to the SPIRE Fund, all involved in the ventilator projects, the refurbishment projects, and the nursing upskill programs. All that has been achieved would not have been possible without you. These initiatives have made a difference to many, many lives and will do so for years to come. 
Moving forward, thousands of lives will be saved. In fact, in my opinion, in our setting, it has advanced critical care by 10 to 20 years. A massive thank you to all the wonderful people for the touching and meaningful words that we have just heard. And to my beautiful and sublime family, my lovely wife, Avril and children, Maya, Bretty and Jont, for all their support and understanding over these many months and in fact over many years. You're amazing human beings. Similarly to my special mom, extended family and valued friends. There have been several valuable and important lessons that have been learned over the past many months. Communication is pivotal in all walks of life. Preparation is paramount. It helped us cope with this pandemic. I've always been an advocate of keeping things simple. If you do the simple things well, you're likely to have a successful outcome most of the time. If we knew everything, it would be easy. And I guess that's why it's called life experience. We keep learning all the time. And it was no different with COVID-19 as we still continue to learn. Many of us work in resource poor settings, but being poor does not mean poor care. And just to bring to the fore the elements that many of us in this beautiful country live with, 55% of South Africans live on under the equivalent of two US dollars per day. And that having been said, being poor does not mean poor care, and excellence can be achieved in the face of adversity. We should always aim and aspire for excellence, there's only one way to do things, and that is the correct way. Much of this is underpinned by something that I've tried to share over many years. I refer to it as the P's, and it is universally applicable. And these P's, and there are four important ones. The first is always stick to the principles. The second is be patient. In my profession, it takes time for diseases to evolve, and it takes time for them to resolve. The third P is practice, and by that I mean experience, a very valuable asset. And all of these P's should be combined with passion. And if you have these, you generally proceed and progress pristinely and along the right path. And so what sometimes seems impossible may not be. The term nothing is impossible is often bandied about. I like to turn it around. So it reads, impossible is nothing. All of this should be performed in the most humane way, with the spirit of Ubuntu, a wonderful South African and African word and philosophy, which means to be compassionate and humane. And this is a philosophy well known in our community and beyond, to be a mensch. Working in the field of critical care, I always say that it is critical to care. I am most graciously and immensely grateful for everything this evening and this very humbling award. I would like to wish you all a beautiful and enjoyable rest of the evening, as well as an abundance of good health, bliss, joy, happiness, warmth, and contentment always. Humble thanks once again. Congratulations, Professor Murr. Professor Murr will be receiving a second award later this evening, the Timothée Professional Excellent Hair in the Time of COVID Award. <laughs> and now, here to entertain us once again, Please welcome back, Honi G. In 2011, the Jewish Achiever Humanitarian Award went to Danny Kay and Cabello for their Shout Foundation. To launch it, they used the hit song from Tears for Fears, Shout, performed by a kaleidoscope of South African talent. Now, at a time when our country needs inspiration, I'm excited to perform a fresh a cappella version of Shout. No instruments were used during this recording. Enjoy. <laughs> Talking to you. Talking to come, you. On. come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. 
you've taken down your guard. I see you. If I could change your mind, I'd really love to break your heart. We are nearing the end of the evening, but we're not quite there yet. Next up is the very prestigious ABSA Business Icon Award. And back to present it, Bongiwe Gangeni. Can I bank here? Or even here? <laughs> Can I keep my money safe? With EBSA, I can. I can. I can. You can bank conveniently and safely on the EBSA Banking app. Download the EBSA Banking app today. We do more so you can. That's Africanacity. Now for the announcement of the award. The EPSA Business Icon Award goes to Michael Katz. A gentleman of lots of elegance. He stays up to date with all the case law and legal opinions. Puts in a lot of time and attention at all hours of day and night. It's hard to know precisely, if ever, when Michael goes to sleep. The first thing that strikes you about him is his warm and engaging personality. Uh, he's got this thing about him that he just draws you into his face. He can be very persuasive and very charming. He often persuades me to get involved in cases when I shouldn't. He not only is a practitioner of extraordinary repute, but he has also been a critical uh, person for the purposes of reforming and developing um, the commercial law of this country, and in particular, company law and tax law. He was involved then in a transaction involving NetBank and BOE. When I moved into Sasol, I found that he had been an established name for many years. We don't get to do this enough to sing the praises of this wacky, competent, upstanding South African citizen called Michael Katz. Michael and I were appointed in the Nugent Commission. When he's involved in public service, he elected not to charge any fees, but to do so uh, just in the best interests of South Africa. He was so pivotal in everything that we know about uh, the Bill of Rights in South Africa, in uh, the way we look at human rights. Michael always was our icon. Michael's achievement doesn't reside in any one particular case, but in the fact that he's become the trusted advisor of business and public bodies who believe in him. As the idea of creating a Holocaust and Genocide Center in the city of Johannesburg came about, there was no doubt in our mind that Michael is the right person. Michael's knowledge, his love of books, his love of the history of Holocaust and Genocide always enriches the conversation. When we really had difficult, seemingly intractable situations, there was a feeling that we needed to go to Michael Katz for his wisdom and for his input and his insights. He's been an educator for 
decades and decades, Michael has taught every single week in the tax and company law courses uh, at WITS. He was able to bring to bear in the lecture room his incredible wealth of knowledge and experience. He has an expression which anybody who knows him knows it means exactly the opposite of what he's saying. Everything starts with with respect. With respect. With respect. With respect. And when he really, really meant you were behaving like an absolute nincompoop, he'd go, with great respect. <laughs> and then everybody around you, <laughs> there was no respect intended at all. <laughs> Michael is an icon. He's so well deserved of this specific award. And last, Michael is really getting the recognition from our community that he deserves. This is another award on top of the myriad of awards that you've received. May he continue to enjoy his blessings, but he will forever live with his other weaknesses, uh, chief of which is his love for Arsenal football team. And so long may that continue to haunt him. Michael, it's a privilege for me to congratulate you on this extraordinary and sterling award that's been made to you. Mazel tov. Many, many congratulations. You are just one of my rock stars. Thanks very much to APSA and the Jewish Report for this honor. Much appreciated. Receiving an honor from one's own community is indeed very meaningful. But no one who has any achievement does it on his or her own. You need supporters. You need an ecosystem of supporters. In my ecosystem, in place one, two, and three, is my wife, Babette. She has been a dedicated counselor, providing the wisest of counsel and great affection great support over 44 years of marriage and five years before that. I have been truly uh, privileged to have had such a wonderful partnership with such a dedicated partner. Also to my children, my daughters, Pierre and Sarah and their husbands, Lawrence and Andrew, they shower me with affection and support at all times. I've also had great support from my colleagues at ENS Africa. They've always been there, helpful, dedicated, and I want to pay tribute to our CEO, Museum Goodwa, and his team. Also the various organizations that I've had the privilege of serving and continue to serve, the uh, executives and staff there have always been highly supportive and enabled me to do everything that I needed to do. Uh, as I've mentioned, thanks to APSA, thanks to the Jewish Report, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Just two pieces of advice, not legal advice, because free legal advice is worth every cent to pay for it. Two pieces of much more important advice. Firstly, the Jewish community, unfortunately, is a shrinking community in a country, South Africa, that faces many challenges and in a world that faces many challenges. What is required? Unity. We need unity of our community. We have remarkable institutions in the Jewish community with very dedicated uh, honorary officers and staff who care to every need of the community. But they need our support and they need to work together. In these challenging times, communal unity is fundamentally important, particularly in an era of poverty and inequality. Secondly, we need to support our country. We need to support the wider community. There too, poverty, inequality abounds. Social justice has been compromised. We need to play a meaningful role and hopefully we can be agents of stability in a background of volatility. 
Um, against this, I do want to make an observation about the Jewish report. They have played a very meaningful role in the era of COVID, where people's sense of well-being was down, and particularly Howard Saxton and his colleagues have spared no effort in the endeavors they've made, uh, constant webinars to uplift the morale of the community when it really needed it. Congratulations to you. Thanks again for this wonderful award. When one has the privilege of serving one's people, one must grasp it with both hands. Thanks for this. We have just one more award to go, and before we get there, we know you're going to love this collab between Yuri Cohen and Danny Beton. That's right, another one! I pray you will find your life And hold it in our hearts When stars go out each night Let this be Jesus. 
And now we'd like to ask you to join us in honoring the heroes who gave of themselves to this beautiful country and community of ours during the COVID-19 pandemic. Have a look at this and please post your messages of support. Just one more thing. Now this was almost impossible to pull off because Howie is involved in every aspect of this thing. So we had to even secretly record this without him knowing. Howie is the Jewish mother of the Jewish Achiever Awards. You can't get rid of him. Please enjoy. Have we got something to show? Quickly yes. something, we'll pull it up there. One second. Oh Howie, can't you wear something so we can actually see it? I want to see what it looks like. So we just couldn't silence the voices. The voices that demanded to be heard. The voices of the South African Jewish community everywhere, at home and abroad, who demanded recognition of the inspiration, the education, the diversity, the depth, the breadth, the entertainment, and most especially, the connection of the whole of the Jewish community. Howard Saxstein, this award thanks you from the bottom of all of our hearts for everything that you've done for us, the South African community, over this period. And here to present the Lawrence and Karen Abramson Family Award to Howard Saxstein, Lawrence Abramson. Thank you, Dori. I would like to give you some background to the award. My father, the late A.B. Abramson and Izzy Kirsch, who I'm sure is watching tonight, were instrumental in growing the Jewish report from humble beginnings to the respected newspaper it is today. I told Howard that my dad was looking down and smiling. Yes, he said, and thanks to him, I'm sleep deprived and starved of Netflix. I would like to quote the late Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Technology gives us power, but it does not and cannot tell us how to use that power. You used the technology and it was very powerful. You communicated across the globe and knew exactly what to say. Your insightful questioning showed the great empathy and deep understanding of the human condition. The show was never about you, but about the subjects. In a terribly difficult, isolated and anxious time, you and your team brought company and thoughtfulness to thousands of Jewish homes in South Africa and around the world. On behalf of Karen, myself, our children, grandchildren, and the entire Jewish community of South Africa, thank you, Howard, and the Jewish Report. <laughs> Thank you, Dad.
that that's very that's very embarrassing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when did you guys do this? You have no idea. You have no idea. Because <laughs> of course you just said passive and not. So we said if him, we are. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> Everyone was phoning. Can you give Howard an award? What Can you about give Howard? What about Howard? I had to speak to every single person on the board. <laughs> you know, some of the winners were all came Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our evening. Thank you to all the sponsors that made this special evening happen. Mazel tov to all the winners. Thank you for all the photos you've sent in. We hope to see you in person at the Jewish Achiever Awards 2021.